Have another beer, buddy. Chatty, chat, chat, chat. I think that they probably said that being shorter is advantageous. Well, they need to teach me, then. There you go. So we had to poke a little fun at him. Uh, Call you ginger swag. Yeah. If you weren't bowlers, what would you have liked to have done instead? Anything else. Literally anything else. <laughs> That's a great answer. The horse is so dead <laughs> that, that it's on... It's on some kid's school project on a landfill already. And there you have it. <laughs> no. We'll talk about that one more. Terrible idea. What up? What's going on, everybody? Feels like we haven't done one of these in a while. Yeah. It's been over two weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was actually three weeks because I forgot that we got back on that. We got back from the trip on Monday, and it was late enough to where it's like, no, we got stuff we got to unpack and whatever else, and we have to be to be to work the next morning. So. No, I completely understood. I mean, I was I was down yeah, to do it if you wanted to, and if not, it was one of those things where I, I completely understand. So I was good either way. Now I got to get used to uh, being back in person, so that I can yeah, I got to yeah. turn to talk to you. Give mm -hmm. it, you know, the old TV deal where they talk. You look at him and you smile at the yeah. camera. Oh, no, I still got that on. My... What's the matter? Oh no, I just. It, when one person's here, I change. There's a setting where it either takes the volume from the sides of the microphone oh. or the front, or like all around or whatever. So, we well, have it on all around. No, I had I have it on back and forth, so I have it taken the sides, uh, taken it out of the sides. Otherwise, oh. it'll take it out of the front too. And of course, I don't know. It, yeah. If a dingo comes down and makes noise, Jared Freed, what's up, Mister oh, Two Seventy? Uh, yes, I've got. Yeah. Uh, I did yeah, do that. Talk about that. <laughs> I should have thought John was in prison in his basement. Yeah. No, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Been, I'm sure. The wife let me uh, leave the house for a change. Yeet. I'm Yeet. not allowed to have nice things. Yeah. So. Um, I thought that one had more flavor than the past. It's not bad. Yeah, it, it, it's it's solid. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I'm ready for you to taste the next one I brought. Uh -huh. I think you're really gonna like it. And I'm ready for you to taste the saison that we brought back from uh, Indianapolis. Okay. We got some good drinky drink tonight. And uh, got the Masters that just happened completed? yesterday. Mm -hmm. Dingo, you're you're gonna knock over the camera. I just know you're gonna knock over the camera. Hi, buddy. What are you doing, Buck? We can get it out of the way in case you haven't heard yet. I did go front eight yesterday. Gutter sheet for two seventy. So, yes, I'm here for it. Amanda, as soon as I did mm -hmm. it, her exact words were, "This is why we can't have nice things." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Greg Atwater once went uh, gutter. Spare back, get her spare sheet. That's, that's it. So yeah, it's uh, of course a uh, two ninety looks a lot better. <laughs> two seventy. Like, yeah, two seventy is like yeah, I, I, yeah. I just I went spare strike, spare sheet. <laughs> Dylan says, well, at least you still shot two seventy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, see that, that's the thing is that uh, I turned a I turned a seven sixty into a seven hundred on Thursday, and I'm still thinking it's like I shot seven hundred. I'm not mad about that. Yeah, I mean. You still got there. Yeah, yeah. i had been a whole lot madder if I'd have had 700 out there and shot 640, so. Yeah, it's fair. Touche on that. And then Ryan Espen with 11 in a row throwing it in the dish. Yeah, yeah, and that's box. 290, yeah, 290 the hard way. And then. A Hulse, note, really? Yeah, well, this was, um, Halseth had hurt himself, and this was back on Tuesday nights, the Gage Majors. Yeah. I used to bowl that 15, 20 years ago. But, yeah, Halseth had hurt himself, and so Espen was subbing for him. Espen went front 11 ditch it was in the ditch by the arrow did he stick or something or I, I don't know what happened but it was in the ditch by the arrows and dave fell off of his chair Jay, dave came out to still watch but he fell off his chair cackling and you know dave's got that I mean, oh dave yeah gets going with that laugh of his <laughs> he was dying back there that's impressive and of course oh yeah oh gosh uh -huh. i just say i don't know esmond all that well i mean i know who he is i pulled in leagues against him like the linehan and stuff like that but I don't know him personally. Jesse Bauer threw a 13 strike 270 for front mm -hmm. five foul, crushed him, spare sheet. Mm -hmm. And no, I can't make any excuses. I didn't stick. I didn't slip. I just threw it in the gutter. Yeah. Good 
Damn, Cardinal shot 867 Friday. Dang. It's all that. Every time I get back from Nationals, I normally have a couple good sets, too, because you get used to aiming at that, and then all of a sudden you feel, you get back to league. And The important thing is, though, nobody cares where you were playing or what happened. Everybody wants to know what ball you were throwing. Of course. You know, because then they can buy that ball and shoot 867, too. <laughs> Brent would be proud. He actually posted yeah. it on Facebook, and I sent it to him right away. Trust me. Mm -hmm. The screenshot is there. <laughs> you know what? I own it. It is oh, the brand-new yeah. hammer brand effect. New yeah, hammer that ball effect. looks pretty sick. Yeah, it's good for everybody but me. Embarrassing flex. I went 300-299 for an 801. Only had a disturbed and a hypercell on. I mean, not bad choices. No. So you missed it off your hand. Yeah, I missed it at the bottom just a little bit. Yeah, the effect <laughs> looks good for everybody but me. Really? It's pretty I, it, It's just a little too fast. It, it's a little fast, and it's a little directional, yeah. and directional stuff doesn't work for me. So it's 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 basically like it's close to the theorem, but the theorem is just a whole lot better shape for me. Right. I'm, I'm sure that the effect would be okay if I play with a little bit more, but it's just – it's it, it, in the theorem, there's so much overlap, and the theorem is just amazing. So I, there's no reason yeah. for me to – Absolutely. Uh, over under first couple games, glad I stuck with it. Yeah, and I, I think it's just – Dingo, you're a nut biscuit. He can't just eat something. He plays with it like a cat. You give him a treat, and he does he does the bat and around thing, and then he like pounces on it and shoves it and sees. Yeah, he's gonna knock something out. He's yeah, he's just chasing every yeah. Okay, no, he's <laughs> but yeah, and this is another thing. That a lot of a lot of Bisa like Keelers told me the same thing. He's like, yeah, dude, everything's crazy with the factory gloss on it. Uh, crazy in one direction or another. And so I did, I, I took the, all I did was hit my theorem with some reactive scuff and that blended it out and made it nice and silky. And now great, great ball. Good. But um, Tyler shot 800 at us Thursday with an, with an effect too. He did have 800? Yeah. Did he? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's twice now because the effect is what he uses Leah. Yeah, and he threw a... Uh, yeah, he's already shot. Yeah, he he bowled a um, one of those. Uh, oh God, a Drew Newton. Oh, he Newtson bowled a, the Kansas City Open. Yeah, no, uh, Heart of America. Yeah, Heart of America. The the adult youth doubles. Oh, it's Kansas City Open is one of us. I think it was yeah. a KCO. Okay, but uh, yeah, he he bowled with uh, Russ's daughter and shot eight forty something. The only effect. Yeah, with yeah. the effect. So yeah, there's a bunch of a bunch of scores with that one already, and it looks it looks sweet. He had to shoot 800, though, because he shot 800 the last time he bowled the pitch. He expected him to shoot 800. I mean, now I was just really asking for too much. <laughs> yeah. That's what he told her. And I was like, well, you set the expectations. No. That's true. Yeah, Touché. Tyler shot the uh, house record at Aaron's. And I believe the Kansas City Open is a sanctioned tournament, too. So exactly. that does count, count, too. Yeah. And the funny thing was is that Tyler threw off the last shot because he had the front 11 the last game. He went in with 507. Five oh seven. And he had the front 11, and so he went and got a house ball. He got an 11-pound house ball because he shot everything but 292 and 294. I guess he just he just used to shoot honor scores like crazy. Wherever he bowled when he was in youth, he used to shoot uh, honor scores like crazy. And so he would try purposely on the last ball to throw off to get all the one, you know, everything 291 through 300. Yeah. And so he's gotten them all but 90, 92 and 94. And so he tried to shoot 94 against us. He ended up shooting 98. And he said his dad was so mad at him one time because uh, um, one of the times he did it, he missed 800. So he needed to. Oh, that's a bummer. So, so yeah, he well, he missed eight. He knew he, he, knew he was going to miss 800. Right. But he was like, I was trying for 293 or whatever. And that meant that he was going to shoot like 797 or yeah. something. And he still did it anyway. <laughs> and so he got his 293. <laughs> but that made him miss 800. Darn. <laughs> on the fun thing, though, I did, uh, on the week that I did shoot 270 with the front eight cutter sheet, I did yeah. shoot 800 this week, so we have that going mm. for me. At least I got something good. Yeah, at the uh, at the Twister house. The Twister house with, with the, the uh, uh, dead kickboards. Yep, and the NV Tour. It was an NV Tour for all three games. Yes, it was. Uh -huh. Yes, it was. And it was, uh, they were stuffed. I, I threw a lot of good shots that night. Yeah. We actually bowl you guys this coming Thursday night too. I think, by the way. Yeah, we do. Uh huh. So yeah, we can preview that. Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll have our we'll have our little James and I'll have our little preview show on Thursday, but we can also talk some nonsense on here too. We don't do that on this show. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just cancel it. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no scratching furniture. Uh, bowling with the Feff is in here. Um, he does really great interviews. I was on his show uh, yeah. last year. Definitely be worth a worth a sub there. He's got all kinds of people on there, and it, it's really fun because he doesn't have just you know the the superstars or whatever. He's got regular people that have inter- you know have interesting stories or do stuff in their own communities and whatever yeah. else. And so it's a lot of good stuff. That's been a while since you did that. By now, it's been over a year. Yeah, feels like it was just yesterday, but it's been a while now. I remember that it was a good show. So yeah, I do recommend checking that out. Um, do you want to vote based on shelf appeal, or it genuinely looks like a really good ball? Maybe both. Shelf appeal. Both. The, the yeah, the shelf appeal is freaking crazy. Like I want one just because of the way it looks, but I like really, really like really slow ball reactions. Summit, um, all kinds of other stuff looks good for me, and so I, I feel like it's one of those things. that's like it looks good, and I think it'd be a good ball for me. Uh, it, it's it's if you want slow, it's definitely slow. I think it reminds me of a, a more of a souped up flare is all it reminds me of. Mm-hmm. So it definitely it definitely seems like it shapes like it. Yeah, that's that's what I get the vibes I get from it anyways. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, this one's either theorem. I, it was it was so well and it, yeah for me it was uncontrollable out of the box. It just yeah. hooks and hooks and kept hooking and I like I really like the shape. It's like it's like a virtual energy blackout, but it's an arrow and a half stronger. And I'm glad I stuck with it because I had a really good weekend after the well, after the first team set. Well, I had a really good weekend with the theorem um, because I didn't throw the theorem. The talking first. in Wichita? Yeah, in yeah. Wichita, Southwest. I didn't throw the theorem the first set. So I had a really good weekend with the theorem. I shot like 20, almost 2200 with it because I went 70 something. It's basically 710, 710, 750. So 2170. Or Still pretty consistent. Yeah. Set, so. And we actually. We we're, we're gonna yeah. cash again together. Yeah. yeah. After yeah, a miserable it. Saturday for me, I, I finally gave you something there. So I think that's the last the last several times that we bowled because Southwest last year. Yes. The, it was flipped. Yep. You carried me last year. Yep. But then we we uh, cashed again in Tulsa. Yep. And then we cashed again in Southwest. They we're gonna cash. I mean, fourteen sixty. Fourteen sixty doesn't yeah. cash. I don't. Know. I only had like. Well, I, I think I had like 680, 690, 680, something like that. And, mm-hmm. and, and But I feel like if I could have got a few of those hits to go better in that first game where I shot like 2-0, yeah. I think we easily could have been – I mean, we'd have pushed him 15. Well, see, the, the but, I mean, at the same time, I got I got tapped to death at Southwest last year. I shot 660. I think it was a clean 660 or it was really close. Yeah. And it was just 4 pin, 7 yeah. pin, blah, blah, whatever else. And you shot 770. The man has now become the trip, trip six – King, mm. just so you know, Patrick Dombrowski move over. Yeah, the left-handed version of Patrick Dombrowski is here. Yeah, and that I was talking to a, I can't remember who I was talking to, talking to about, but it's like, oh, well, it was a, oh, uh, we, uh, Phil Cosper, we, we oh, crossed yeah. with, we crossed with him yep. Saturday at the tournament, mm-hmm. and I was telling him about it. I'm like, man, I had like four of them in a row. It was like the back four of the second game of doubles where it was just trip six, trip six, trip six, trip six. And they look the exact same way every time. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm throwing, I can't move because they're falling down. Why do I want to move and go flat seven or something? Yeah. And that's, that's how I know that I'm throwing it good. Cause if I'm blending it out enough to where it's, where it's uh, getting that kick and it's like, okay, I think I had like eight of them that set, but it's like, no, there's a bunch. And I mean, I was all, I was here for it. Mm -hmm. You were my partner. So yeah. Uh, and, and and I can follow up on that too, real quick. I have to if I had to pick one, it's definitely Black Widow three point The ball is really good, really good. What's this? You ever heard super of, chat for James. Super chat for James. Appreciate it. You've heard of Newton's law, and everyone knows about Murphy's law, but you've heard of Cole's law. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> but you, just, you have to excuse my friend. He's yeah. a little slow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Feel weird. You haven't done I'm all enough of an ass to do that. <laughs> if if I uh, that would be that would be fun. That, that would be fun, but I don't have the front eleven nearly often enough to try to do that. <laughs> no, me either. <laughs> like if, if I have a chance, I've got to take everything that I can get. Oh, absolutely. So, and I can I can get all that stuff without trying to throw off. So like like a. Like Eric Moore said, I can proudly say I have a, a 294 when I was trying to strike. It's like I could do the same thing, so I'll, I'll get all of them naturally without even trying. Yeah, no. Did you guys talk about the Rick stuff already? We have not talked anything. We are um, we haven't even got the topic yet, technically. No, we're no, we're gonna we're gonna leave that one alone. Okay, you heard, <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, we're gonna leave that one alone. 
Some of power and absolute peak. Wasn't that an April Fool's joke? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Nick Brown had something about a prodigy max. He got me all excited because he sent he sent it to me in my he got into my DMs with a with a with the prodigy max and I got all excited and then he I, slid into your I, DMs yeah. only to let you down. Yep. Wow. Oh, I saw that one. He rick rolled me, but he did not rick roll me. Wasn't it he, blue? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, Sexy. Yeah. 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 And of course the prodigy was one of my favorite balls. It, it's in my it's in my top ten all time list. It's good. And, yeah, it is good. He he got me excited. He didn't rick roll me, but he rick rolled me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He rick rolled me, but he did he did uh, give me up and he did let me down. He did run <laughs> around and hurt me. Never gonna let you <laughs> down. Yeah. Now that song stuck in my head the rest of the night. Thank you. I appreciate that. But um we can we can talk about the J.R. Raymond and Mikey Pinnell stuff, because that was a whole other that was a whole other animal. Oh, that Going was back and uh, forth about that stuff, talking about layouts and you know what? I'm on Team JR on that one, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> That's uh I, I fall right in the middle the vast majority of the time because it's like, yeah, you don't need to worry about layout. If you don't right. average 220, 230 and bowl on tour, layouts are fine tuning stuff. Yeah. They don't matter near as much. I mean, they it, it's one of those things where they matter on paper. Or they matter. It's like you can see a difference, but is it a, a JR's point? Is it's not a, it's not a, a super impactful difference. It's it's not like you're, you're worrying about using a four and a half inch pen or a five inch pen. Somebody that can't throw the ball the same way twice, it's not going to matter. I the vast majority of the time, and that's why I put. Uh, you know, you use the same layout on most of the stuff. Pretty Angel much. has used one layout on everything for years, and she's just fine. I'm down to one layout now for everything because it's just that if if I want, I, I don't need, I don't like trying to use layouts to trick something. The ball design is what the ball design is, and so I pick the bowling balls based on what the bowling balls do. I don't. I think it's kind of dumb when people pick bowling balls and then try to use, well, this is a really strong ball, so I'm going to go really weak with the layout. It's yeah. like, why do you, then why, why buy that strong of a ball? Just buy something weaker and put a regular layout on it. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the fence. It, it's one of those things. If you obsess too much about the details, you're going to end up screwing yourself and stuff on paper doesn't translate to on the lane. You're still going to line up and you know knock the pins down. And I, you do just fine with using a regular layout, just the same layout on virtually everything. I do just fine. Angel does just fine. I have a few pin down layouts, but that's about it. Yeah, and that that if you're looking for something specific, if you're I want this specific layout for this tournament or this type of scenario, then sure. But for the vast majority of people, you know, getting all crazy and worrying so much about their layouts, um, once you find something that kind of fits your game, then you know. You can kind of tweak small small tweaks from there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I think it's probably and I, I get what they're both saying. They're both being they're both kind of using hyperbole a little bit. JR saying they don't matter. Well, obviously they matter some, but he's basically saying they don't matter as much as everybody else says they matter. And Mikey on the other side is saying, Well, technically they do matter, but at the same time it, it's, it's it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Graham, no, I do not have an ultimate defender. I still have the defender hybrid, and I still throw it. But I do not have an ultimate defender. Luke throws one. Yeah, the U I haven't gotten the UD out for a little while since I've been throwing the theorem on literally everything, and the the 3.0 has kind of caught up a little bit. Trash can moved on me. Yeah. I'm so used to it being next to me. Sorry. Yeah, the 3.0 um, has, has snuck back into the bag a little bit more regularly. The 3.0, you said? Yeah. I really like that ball a lot. Yeah, it looks really good for you. Yes, I love it. I that is the that's what I shot to front eight two seventy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two seventy sheet for or with. I hope you like this. This is one I've had when I've been trapped in my basement doing the last couple of shows. This is the one I always drink that I every time I tell you oh, I really yeah. want you to have this. And I forgot the tequila. Oh. It's on the pickle. Oh well. I I actually forgot that I've got some stuff. Trevor brought me a new bottle of something the other day. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. You like that? Yeah, that's a little different flavor, too. Yeah. That's one of my favorite IPAs now, I think. It's really growing on me. I got one left in there. 
Yeah, it's not super huge on the hops. No, it's not. You get the flavor of it without yeah. getting like the the throw punch. It's mm -hmm. very it's very smooth. Just got three point oh on black urethane pearl. I don't have the black urethane pearl. I won't drill until I absolutely have to. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, Eric, I think you'll okay. like it. I think the three, so. the three point oh with the way that yeah that that's another scary ball for Eric. Um, and then the yeah uh, Cardinal, I definitely agree that that the new radical conspiracy. It's exactly what you think it is. It's a guru. It's an original black conspiracy. It's exactly exactly that. Really. Oh, I didn't mean to leave Eric's 294 comment up for 20 minutes. but <laughs> Well, guess what? We now know that Eric can probably say he has a 294 when he tries 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows that for the last 15 minutes now. But... <laughs> oh. Still talk a little yeah. Masters coming up here. JR also made a video proving CG placement matters. So, yeah, layouts, layouts don't matter, but CG placement matters. I did see that comment now that you mentioned that somebody somebody mentioned that it's like okay layouts don't matter but where you put the cg on a symmetric ball i think i saw rick hamlin saying that it's like okay yeah layouts don't matter but where you put the cg on a symmetric ball does yeah somehow okay yeah what ifs what ifs what ifs uh yeah i think the ultimate defender would look good for you i don't think you need to go out of your way to drill one yeah um, I think it would look good for you. It's basically like a little, it, it's kind of on top of your big time. Mm. So yeah, again, good ball reaction. Yeah. It just, I don't think you need it. I'm in more of a situation where I'll put holes and stuff when just kind of as I see fit. I really, I really want to drill a sensor solid. I really want to drill one. I, I've taken everything I've had to not drill one. That's one thing I was going to talk to you about. And I was going to actually say something before the show. I, I strongly, strongly considering the drop to 14. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm considering the drop to 14 is I noticed it specifically, just gracious, let me start over. I noticed it specifically this weekend because we bowled the 16 games. We bowled the eight and then the eight. Yeah. By the time that I was done both days, with as much as they burn up, especially going with guys like Dylan and them, it's it, it just going to burn yeah. up. I feel like I could use the ball speed and the rev rate. Mm. I feel like it just I'm getting worn out. And by the time I'm done with these long blocks, I feel like I'm starting to muscle it because I'm getting so tired. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Strongly considered it. I don't know if I'm gonna make the commitment yet because that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But uh what do you think? Yeah, I I mean I've thought about it too. And every every single person that's that's gone to it, it, it just for us it it causes I mean, because we got 15, 15, 15, 15, yeah, 15 all over the place. And so it causes is and especially with the reviews too, most yeah. people throw fifteen, so it causes a problem there. But honestly speaking, it's like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of in that same territory. And everybody else that's gone to it, I think Rob Wagner still throws fourteen. He does. Yes. Um I know an awful lot of people that throw fourteens and nobody has a bad word to say about it. Nobody. I'm gonna throw them forever. Yeah, he threw him forever, and he looked good with him too. And he uh, said he, he did notice that he was having the same. Remember when I had that elbow issue for a while? Mm -hmm. He said that was the same issue he had, and that's why he went to the fourteen. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know why he made the switch back to. Uh, when he was a Weber, they got some things figured out that allowed him to go back into it. Um, but the the main the, the problem before is that all storm stuff was the the numbers were completely different, and yeah. so it changed the ball reactions a lot. Brunswick stuff's not it's not, not too really bad, like right? that. I'm still doing okay for right now, but I am feeling the tug. Like I, I, I want to go that direction. I don't think I can. Yeah, I get it. Um, it doesn't bother me to go bowl three games a league. Heck, it doesn't even bother me to bowl five, six game. A six game block doesn't bother me at all. It's, uh, it's when we start getting into the eight or, you know, like this weekend where I bowled eight Saturday and then trying to bowl eight again on Sunday. I could really feel the fatigue. I, I was getting tired. So. Yeah, I, th I think generally speaking. Uh, just getting heavy after a while and yep. just getting a little bit more worn out bowling stuff and especially yeah. filming a lot and this stuff. Uh, but this, yeah, 14 and storm did some stuff on this too. 14 has more kinetic energy yeah, uh, than 15 because the extra speed and revs you're able to get on the ball makes up for the difference in weight. That and plus sense. 14 deflects a little bit more properly. So you're not going to get the strong, the too strong of ball motion through the pins. Right. Um, so, so 14, actually, for everybody that throws it, I haven't heard a bad word about it over the last several years. I've so. considered it. What I'll probably do is if I do something, I'll give you a shot, and we'll, I'll probably 
mortar something over the summer and just drill it, put holes in something cheap. It doesn't have to be anything special. I've even considered ordering a plastic ball and just throwing it just to see how I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have I have seen this to where you are more prone. That's the one thing is you are more prone to leaving the corner pins on the half pocket hits. They don't kick stuff out quite as much. Let me start. Okay. Um, but you make up for it carrying other stuff. You're not you might have an extra corner pin. You might replace a corner pin with like a drive by nine or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, every, yeah everybody cool. still scores. Um, yeah, and this this is a good thing. New Storm stuff, the, the AI core specifically in that new high road, because the high road stuff is 16 pounds is a cra it's crazy, crazy strong core, and then 15 is completely different, 14 is even different from that, but the new road has the same numbers from 14 to 14 through 16. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, mystery ball. That, that'd be something. That's a good idea. I just my my problem is I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna like it and then I'm gonna want to switch all my stuff immediately. Yeah, I might just tough it out a little longer, but it's it's hard. I I'm sore today, like I'm hurting today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and this is this is true of most of the Brunswick stuff. This is the thing is that everything I've thrown like equivalent storm to Brunswick stuff. The Brunswick stuff's all an arrow stronger. Like a theorem, the theorem on paper is a blackout, and it's it's. Oh gosh, it's the same, but it's just the theorem is so much stronger. I'm still waiting on mine to stop. The sensor solid is supposed to be like an exponent type of ball, but it's just an arrow stronger than the exponent. Gosh, really? That much stronger an arrow? Mm -hmm. That's insane. Anything yeah. Brunswick brands right now just hooks a crap load. Yeah, the the covers are so much stronger. Oh yeah. If you like to stand left and watch a ball go uh, go. Stand left, throw it right, and watch it come back, or mm -hmm. vice versa if you're righty or lefty. But uh, that, that's definitely stuff you should be throwing. Yeah, I've I've heard some not so great things about the road so far. We'll we'll see. Um, I don't I don't know if Zach is Tobias has already got one. I don't know if Zach's getting one, uh, but I've I've heard some not great things about yeah the the road. He meant the road, not the all road. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. So I'll bring my sensor solid up to the show you after. Yeah, sounds good. But yeah, I think that I haven't. It, it looks like kind of a, a journey knockoff on paper. And I've heard it's just not really that great. The, the road? Yeah. I haven't really. I mean. When's it come out? The ball, it comes out the 19th. So it's another three weeks ish. So videos can't go out for another one, a week. Um, no, they actually could come out last Friday. Oh, but. well, maybe I just haven't looked and seen anything. Uh, Zach's road arrived mid block. Um, Zach's the road arrived mid block on Saturday. Man, I cannot read, nor can I talk. Uh, reading is hard. I can't compute. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Masters, everybody who reviewed it compared it to the Journey. Yeah, because that's based, I mean, the Journey is 252, 050 ish something. Mm -hmm. That's about the closest thing without going to something discontinued. But the, co the cover, REX Hybrid, puts it kind of in Journey territory, realistically speaking. And I just, I haven't watched any videos on it yet. Um, but, you know. Most of the videos are going to be somewhat favorable. Yeah. Um, or at least, but at the same time, I, I, I do the same thing. I try not to like bash on something because just because something sucks for me or something's good for me doesn't mean that it's going to be. Yes. Like the effect sucks for me, but I could see why it would be, would be really good for a lot of other people. So I didn't bash it in the review. Um, so because it's not. I'm not, I'm not giving opinions. I know people want opinions, but I don't want to give opinions because something, something else that's really good for me may not be good for somebody else. And so I try to just stick with describing what the ball does and leaving it there. That's fair. Jungo Tamer and Hutchinson. I'm not impressed. Yeah. I, and I, I've actually heard from some people say, yeah, it's just, it's not good. Interesting. So. You'd think that they would have done everything they can to make this one a, a home run, considering it's one of the road balls. But uh, you would you would think so, but I just don't think that. Again, I think what he, what he said about the Storm's covers are just in a weird place right now. Rex Pearl is good on virtually everything. Yeah, 
and uh, the summit is good, but a lot of the other stuff is kind of hit and miss. And even the stuff that's some, somewhat successful is kind of kind of hit and miss. And just comparing it to you know the Brunswick stuff, I think the Brunswick stuff has consist has consistently reacted better. And even though I still carry a summit around, I've, I've transitioned mostly to the Brunswick stuff. Um, the summit is just nails. I mean, the summit is amazing. And I still have some of the storm stuff around. It's just the Brunswick stuff's more consistent in oil. Yeah. It hooks a lot more. And that presents its own kind of problem. Uh, but generally speaking, it just reads the lane so much better. So. Gotcha. If we uh, did you want did you want to hit more comments or did you want to get into the masters or? I think we're pretty well caught up with the comments, so we can talk about the masters. Okay, it's probably probably the best show that definitely the best show we've had this year. One of the best shows I've seen in a long time. Congrats to Deron Booker, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, yeah. that's an awesome way to win. Yeah, yeah, and he did it in convincing fashion. He was uh, he was he, nails. Yeah, he was nails all week, all week. Yeah. And that's uh, there. There's been a lot of stuff debated the the absence of the lefties. Yes. Um, but then, but the other thing is, is you know that that's always going to be a thing. Sometimes it, it's one of those up and down things. If if the left and the right are equal on any given week, it's an accident. It's just a happy accident more than anything. Yeah. But when you see somebody like Deron, I mean, it's thirty three mils on that pattern. How does Deron make a show? Because you're thinking, okay, with all that volume, that's going to favor the big rev rates. Oh, yeah. But that lane surface was so dirty and beat up, the lanes were supposed to be replaced before the tournament took place because by the topography reports, they weren't even supposed to, like, like, they couldn't have sanctioned a regular league there with how bad those lanes were. Did we run the Masters there? Uh, yes. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, but they had the Masters there. The, <laughs> the topography report was awful. But the lanes were supposed to be replaced. It didn't end up happening. And by then it's like, well, you can't move it. And so you just got to bowl and, and deal with it. Um, and so they did. And you would have thought that a big rev rate would have ran the whole field over, but somebody like Deron that has a very, very throwback, simple Doug Kent type of game. That's, that's kind of who he reminds me of. Um, the fact Dougie that he, fresh. yeah, the fact that he just mowed over, never lost, just mowed the whole tournament over. Um, that was that was pretty impressive. Shame on him though; he beat Daria's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Shame on him. Doesn't he know? Yeah, we can't have that happening. Yeah, Sun, Suncoast looks like houses here in Detroit. A lot. So yeah. Hacky was saying in one of his videos how bad the lanes were. Like he said, he watched his ball skip. Couple yeah. times. Well, and that's what because yeah. uh, uh, Kyle Davy was out there, Riley Patton was out there, yeah. uh, Bo was out there, Austin Bold was out there. He made the cut. Yeah, I did see that. I watched him lose the semi. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th there were there were uh, cracks in the lane. <laughs> Plus the lane panel seams. Yeah, on some of the lanes, depending on where you were playing, the ball hopped at the panel seams. That's terrible. And it's just, yeah, and just looking at the topography, they didn't, and they use their their scanning machine on all the lanes, uh -huh. and it's not even just like, okay, well, you take your freaking weird things out and you go at 15 feet, 30 feet, and whatever else. No, they had the whole, the whole surface scanning machine, and it was awful. I mean, just awful, awful how bad those lanes were. Any, of the, any thoughts on the shot Belmo threw in the 10th versus PD? I, and again... This is one of those things where uh, I, I did the I did my the watch party or the live com or whatever with it, and that was one of those that I was saying the whole time. It's like okay, well, Dabrowski he gets up on the ninth frame. It's yeah. like he's got the the match in hand. All he needs to do is stay clean the rest of the game, and he's fine. And then he opens. I'm like, holy crap! And then he gets up, and then all of a sudden, he needs to strike out in the tenth to make Belmo do something. And then he gets a swisher seven. And so it's like, okay, well, Belmo just needs a mark. And I sat here for five solid minutes about and said, well, okay, you need a mark. Belmo's the best in the world. Hit the pocket somewhere. Get your get your mark. Somebody yeah. else said he should have taken his plastic ball out and fired it at the head pin. Probably with anyone like five seven or five. Yeah. <laughs> and he just leaked it right. He leaked it right. 
and a two eight ten turned into an eight ten, and I, that match was crazy. That was the best match because it was back and forth the entire time. It was super tight, and that's what a lot of the matches were. They were back and forth. They were super tight. There wasn't any big scores, but there wasn't any terrible scores. Uh, very competitive. It was the shot was there if you hit it. It kept you honest. Um, they didn't have that big thing like the left lane on the last several shows or virtually all this year, mm -hmm. you know, has been on fire. They started a little bit too far left on the left lane, but they didn't run out of lane and it didn't ever get bad. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy, crazy things in the Belmo Dabrowski match. And then Dabrowski just made a couple of bad shots in the title match and D-Ron never did. I mean, the, the first shot, he almost went Brooklyn. But that's just a, your first time on TV. You get the nerves oh, out. Yeah. Everybody laughs about it. He picks up his nine pin. Move on. And then, yeah, he aced the next shot. And then he just hit the pocket, hit the pocket. Uh, Dabrowski made a couple bad shots, and that was really the difference in the match. I'm a big Dabrowski fan, man. I, oh, that guy yeah. throws it pretty good. Yeah. Uh, both a couple of really throwback games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, it was really cool to see them both both for the title. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Dabrowski's going to get a national title at some point. I would hope he, so. Thing is, is he doesn't bowl the tour full time. So, mm -hmm. um, I think if he was out there on a cons more consistent basis, I think he'd have already won by now, or possibly, possibly. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I like I really like both of their games. D. Ron Booker, of course, I like watching him. He's closer to my style than anything because yeah, uh, doesn't have a lot of ball speed, not a big rev rate, and it's it's fun to watch. I didn't get to watch a ton of the show. We had it obviously on while we were bowling, mm -hmm. but we'd peek up and watch. But yeah, the, to finish that that whole match out was. Pretty awesome, and it was really cool to see see him win. So yeah, because he was the he's the first African American to win since since Faulkner, right? Yeah, and, that and was it was like, the Masters, that was right? Like Ten years ago, yeah, because George Branham the third, yep. and then Faulkner, and then uh, D. Ron are the only three to win major. Yeah, because yeah, Billy Oatman never won a title, did he? I don't think he might have won a regular title, but they're they're the only three to win major titles. <laughs> that that's what, and Billy, I think Billy Oatman. Did win a title. I don't know. I that thought he got second was his high finish. He just passed away here recently. Rest in peace. Oh, wow. Billy he Oldman? wasn't that old. No. Let's look this up. Uh, rookie of the year. Oh, yeah. So they just. Oh, yeah. They, oh, well, I guess it happened a year ago. Yeah, he yeah, died. He, old. he was almost 60. Holy crap. Yeah, here James just said Oban never won a title. He did get Rookie of the Year though. Yeah, he was okay. he was up there in age. He was, on, he was on TV a couple couple times. He was kind of a late bloomer getting on the tour as well. Yeah, he wasn't like I bet he was easily mid thirties, thirties maybe, hey, maybe younger than that. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, he threw it good too. Billy O did. Yeah, but yeah, he, it's, he's another one that shocks you that he's never won. But yeah, that's who I was thinking first was was Billy Oatman, the last one to win. And then I saw the picture of uh, Faulkner, and I remember watching that. Yeah, I remember Masters watching that show. Faulkner win. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Which he doesn't bowl the tour anymore. No, um, I've seen him at some other stuff. I think he was one of the the Springfield Ten Ks. Maybe. He wasn't there last year, but and he might have been. I just didn't see him. But I didn't. I didn't. No, I wasn't him there much. last year. He might. He might have been there the first. I, I see him at some other stuff. Yeah, he's not a he's a good guy. He's really quiet, but mm -hmm. well he's he's kinda like D Ron. Yeah, he's actually. really quiet, pretty soft spoken, very even keel, doesn't nothing gets to him, nothing rattles him, nothing very, very if you remember right with um with Gary Faulkner, so he was one long time motive staffer, obviously. Mm -hmm. And if you remember his first tournament that he's actually tried storm stuff, he just drilled a bunch of stuff. He went and bowled one of David Mike's tournaments, but only mm -hmm. the East. Because remember, you and I were like, the heck is this dude wearing Storm, throwing Storm stuff? On? That That's where I think I must have seen yeah. it at that tournament. He was wearing, uh, or he wasn't wearing any Storm stuff, but he, he had a bunch of Storm balls. And we're like, what the heck? And Waz was, yeah, they hit me up last night. It said they're going to be come through town. He wants to throw a bunch of new stuff. And I think this was around his last time that he pulled the tour full time. But I, I, uh -huh. I don't talk to Gary. I don't know Gary. But yeah. I've interacted with him a couple times. He's like, what in the heck is that? Yeah. This is the Saison oh, okay. that we brought back from a. Uh, and this is, they had a barrel aid saison, and that was crazy, crazy. And they didn't have, I, I couldn't get it to go, basically. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't, it was one of those things that my brother doesn't, my brother has some of those that they don't do, 
they don't even though they can give you a growler or a can they just don't do for certain beers because it doesn't work with them or whatever else right so they had a barrel aged one that was amazing um but they still had the regular saison uh to go and they gave me a sample of it they actually opened a fresh one of these cans because they didn't have it on tap and so they opened a fresh one of these cans to let me sent let me sample it and i'm like oh yeah it's not the same thing but that's this is super super clean this is almost like a lager version of a saison it's okay. not quite as heavy not quite as much body as like a tank seven but the flavor is right there and it's so clean and crisp this is from black dog brewing company in indianapolis so any people that are around indy that have been to black dog or any people that are around indy that haven't been to black dog stop there i need you to uh you and angel to go to 785 yeah yeah uh, uh, Kraft said he actually went over there for his birthday the other day and that, yeah, we need to get out there and do something. We just need the time to get out there. But yeah, this thing is. That's weird. Mm -hmm. That's not what I was expecting at all. Yeah. What's in that? It's tank seven ish. Yeah. But it's a whole lot cleaner than a regular Saison. Yeah. It's almost more Belgian white territory. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. There's definitely sweetness to it, for sure. That's not bad. Um, uh, sorry. Was the oil pattern symmetrical or not? Uh, no, it was asymmetrical. It was and, asymmetrical, yeah. And they do that because I heard a few different things on this. Uh, but, so what happened is they normally they run a sweeper after the practice sessions, but they ran the sweeper before the practice sessions this year. And I heard this is not confirmed. This is what I was told, but that the lefties ran over the sweeper. And so they adjust, they made some tiny little adjustments to the pattern before the tournament started, before they released the pattern. And it ended up going a little too far the opposite direction. People have said that the Suncoast is a lefty house or it is favorable, but it's favorable from like really straight, like outside of five, you can just walk it down the side. It's, it's like Trevor always used to say when he was going to Newman, yeah. it's like no matter what they put down, you could always get reaction off the one board at, at uh, uh, North Rock. Or North Rock, yeah. And so it was kind of the same thing with Suncoast, but the adjustments that they made to the pattern kicked the lefties out of that zone that it was scorable from and just put them into angle issues and whatever else. But the idea behind a symmetric pattern is, or an asymmetric pattern, is that there's you know so many more there's a lot higher percentage of righties on the right side and so if you if you have a symmetric pattern well it's not going to play equal right the left side doesn't break down either at all or near as fast and so uh you adjust the pattern on either side to try to keep the scoring pace kind of at the same it yeah. just it kind of favored the righties this week but other times there's three lefties on TV. So it's one of those things where it just, it was a rough week for the right or roughly rough week for the lefties and they just couldn't figure anything out. Come on, Jonathan, spit it out. So yeah. Sorry. Rough leak for the left. Rough leak. <laughs> rough leak for the lefties. How much, much work in a wood chop chuck? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, this is really so, weird. Not what I was yeah. expecting at all. Even when it is symmetrical, it's not symmetrical because, you know, you have 20 year old that. Those the lane surface at Suncoast are probably 20, 25 years old. And so if you have all that all that, you know, traffic yeah. on the right side for a couple of decades, a symmetrical pattern is still gonna play different on either side of the lane. Even if you just put one righty and one lefty on a fresh pattern, yeah, by themselves, either side is still gonna play different. Even if it's a symmetrical pattern on the same lane just because of twenty, you know, two decades of uh, track friction on the right side. We've also got the uh, the uh, World Series starting this week. So, yeah, I saw that uh, Zach Wilkins was back in town getting uh, some stuff drilled. It looked like, uh, yeah, getting some stuff drilled with uh, Drew Knudsen at uh, Drew's Pro Shop at Gladstone in Kansas City. Shout out! Yeah, so that's where Zach gets. Now he is moving to Minnesota, but yeah. he's still again, you know. Uh, Drew's drilled stuff for him for a couple of years now. So. Yeah, since they've got, uh, since they've since he's lived here, I believe. Yeah, tornado warning with a chance of golf ball size hail in St. Louis. Yeah, we drove through St. Louis twice, and we just drove through and kept kept going. What are you trying to say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were in uh, Pennsylvania for about a week. That's why the show was three weeks instead of 
one week we went to see our daughter who lives in William, her family's in Williamsport. And then we had a couple of friends getting married in York, which is, which is a couple way, a couple hours away from Williamsport. And Wait so, a minute. Is it York where Hershey's is? It's very close. I've been to that Hershey's before. Yeah. Her, yeah. We, uh, mom and my parents took us to that, like when I was seven or eight, it's freaking so cool. it's been 35 years or whatever. Even if yeah. I, I wasn't that young, I was a teenager, probably 15, 16. Mm-hmm. It might've been like 13, 14 when I went, but yeah, it's, uh, if you've never gone to that Hershey's and you're in the area, cause that's the home, that's their home. Yeah. But yeah. it's, it's really yeah, cool. Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's where Hershey's came from. Yeah. Duh. So, yeah. Not Hershey, York, but it is close, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very close. Okay. So I'm not stupid. No, it's in that. And, and our friends got married in Gettysburg and we talked about that because yeah. we, we did get to go around and uh, ate one of the places there in the big, in the big square. And of course my dad's a big history buff. And so I like history. He too, was yeah. asking us all kinds of things and uh, he's not watching this. So we got him a couple things for his birthday and or Christmas. Of course, his birthday is not until October. And now he's watching. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't Spoiler be watching. Spoiler alert! Oh goodness, we got him some little trinkets, but he knew exactly. He'd been there a couple times, and so he knew exactly where we were at and what we were talking about. But it was, it was really cool if we'd have had a little bit more time to explore. Uh, but Williamsport was very fun too. It reminds me of the that general area reminds me of the Ozarks. It's just not quite as congested right. as the Ozarks is. Uh, but yeah, that was a. I've never been to Williamsport. I'm sure everything around there is all about the Little League World Series. And that's the thing. I wanted to go see the the Stadiums. fields. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't. We didn't get there. And Williamsport is very interesting because it's on the the whole city is on a river. Yeah. And it's just you're on the north side of the river. You're on the south side of the river. And they have a very super condensed. Like they have a they have a legends type area just right dead center of town. But it's not that big of a town. I didn't think it was very big. Yeah, it's not very big, but they do have like a Legends area that's right dead center of town. They do have some really good places to eat that we went to, but it's very, very chill. It's it's not, it's not, everything's kind of newer, so nothing's run down, nothing's older. That's good. Um, but I can't even, I can't even think about it because, you know, some of the smaller towns in Kansas you drive through, it's like, well, everything's like 100 years old. Right. So I can't even think of how to describe it. That's still pretty cool, though. Being able to uh, still go to Williamsport is still pretty cool, even though you didn't get to see the stadiums. Yeah, it's little kids playing baseball, but uh, still kind of cool history of the sport. You know, I mean, I mean yeah. guys from like MLB that played in the Little League World Series. It's, it's it's pretty neat, though. Yeah, that was the first time that we've been out to see our daughter since she was there, and we got to meet the meet the doggos and see the house and. And that was that was cool. It was actually more like a regular vacation where we didn't yeah. do a whole lot. We just kind of hung out. We ate a few times. We went out and did some things. I hung out with my son-in-law and played some video games for a little bit. And so yeah, it was just a very chill week, just in general. Got to bowl in some places and uh, got to bowl in a bowling center, a couple bowling centers in York. And then we went up went down to Baltimore to watch uh, Max that does the scarred prints stuff. Uh, the ball cups and whatever else um he is in baltimore and so we went down to baltimore to watch them bowl and they had a very interesting center where it's basically behind a strip mall um the way i explain it the way i explain it it's like it's like going to kiku yeah so yeah you go down it's like j- there's a strip mall you walk into Fairlawn plaza you can see yeah you, the strip mall you can see bolero but then you walk in and you walk down a couple flights and it's actually kind of underground, but then there's 48 lanes. So it's like North Rock, but underground behind a uh, strip mall. That's really cool. What was, what was, was the name of really, it? Uh, um, Is it B-more? Uh, I Bolero. B-more. I can't remember. Uh, James, I'm just, James remember. I'm just curious. It's kind of cool, though, to to be able to experience something like that because to go into that, that'd just be weird. Perry, Bolero Perry Hall, I think. Is what it is, and it's inside the shopping center. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's underground behind a shopping center. It's For, a really nice place. It's got to be big because it's got forty eight lanes in it. That's yeah. not that's not a tiny center by any means. Yeah, and it was one that Bolero was taking care of. Is what it seems like. I mean, Max would have to tell me, but it seems like Bolero is taking care of. We had a good experience there. Mf Perry Hall. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, Bolero has taken care of North Rock. Yeah, they have done a good um, job. At least. It, it's expensive as heck to do anything there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but they're there. It looks nice. The outside looks hideous. What did two pitchers of beer cost me down there again? 
God, the picture. Well, the God, yeah, the the pictures of Michelob Ultra, a picture of Michelob Ultra at North Rock is twenty two dollars. It was yeah, it was forty six dollars after for two pictures after it was all said and done. Yeah, and so we're like, did she accidentally ring in the beer towers? But I, the beer tower was like thirty or thirty three or thirty some odd nonsense. She had already poured it and everything, and I was like, yeah, or else I would have said, no, I'm not gonna pay forty six dollars for two beers. Okay, this is awesome. We bowl in a tournament near Hershey, the Lebanon, uh, the Lebanon tournament. Throw a five bagger, you get a bologna. That's cool. That's amazing. That's awesome, actually. Uh, he said back in the day there was Blue one in Ridge. Blue Ridge Mall. That's yes, amazing. I do remember the one that was in Blue Ridge Mall. It was still open when I was younger, but I don't remember the name of it. There's also a tiny one still in Independence that's still there, like a little six lane, eight lane house. What did I? What did I get? What did I get? What did I get? Gosh, and that's gonna kill no. me now. What was the name of the one in Blue Ridge Mall? Was? Bobby Witt Jr. hit a home run tonight, maybe thirty dollars. He's uh, on fire right now. Yeah. He, yeah, I need your, I need the the Orioles to come through here. They're we're in a tie game here, and I got that. Diamond, Diamond's right. Yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, I need the, I need the, I need your Boston, I need your Red Sox to come through for me tonight because they're the only one I'm worried about. We don't swing bats, we pitch right now. I've, I've got a, I've got a four leg parlay. The Braves won, the Cubs won. Yep. Then I put Boston in there and the Dodgers. And so as long as your boys come through, we're going to be okay. Don't worry. You won't find out that result until like 2 o'clock in the morning. But I did. I, I put 5 bucks on Bobby Witt Jr. to hit a home run tonight. And he got So that, that made my – even if I lose everything else, that made my day. Oh, yeah. So, goddamn yeah, baseball started. It did yeah. start last uh, last Thursday, actually. Blue, yeah. yeah, Blue Ridge Lanes was the one in the mall. Diamond's the one in the little small center in Independence. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I remember the one in Blue Ridge. I don't know if I ever bowled there. I do remember going in and seeing it, but I was little. I'd had to have been pretty young. Yeah, that had to have been a long time ago because there were some places here in town that I never bowled. Highland Crest, I never bowled at. Um, oh, I did bowl at I did bowl at Meadow Southwest. I, I bowled for several years while Meadow and Southwest were still around, and then Gates North, of course. Have you bowled up in Excelsior Springs yet? No. That that center is also in a shopping center. Mm. But it's it's like a strip mall. Mm -hmm. so you just walk up, and it's just a it's a storefront. You walk in, it's a little. Uh, it's not very big. It, shoot, it might be twelve lanes. Mm -hmm. Might even be fourteen. I don't. Anyways, it's not very big, but it's yeah. it's a tiny little center. And we're just we're talking about the strip mall. The one in uh, Hayes is. Uh, yeah. It's also. I have Yeah, it is. I haven't been into. I haven't ever been into that one. I've been. I've driven by it a million times because we always used to stay in Hayes for for bridge, bridge inspection, and the the uh, Mexican restaurant just just a few blocks north of that. We always ate at that, and then Gela's slash LB Brewing Company in Hayes. We always we always did that for supper. You just need to bowl the tournament next year. And we can go down Saturday and hang out. Yeah, see that—that's the thing is that I I do need to get into that tournament next year. It just always sneaks up on me. It's in February, right? Yeah, February. it's always in February. Okay, so we just need to get out there and bowl that tournament because that seems like just and any excuse I can get to go to Hayes and yeah, if we can get that get out there the day before and and just hang out a little, I'm, I'm kind of ready to. I finally got the Central Standard Brewing thing out of the way. I finally got to go there. Yeah, yeah, we got you there. And I don't know if Jason had been there before or not. Jason, have you I'm been to Central Standard Wichita? Yeah, yeah, Jason, if you're still uh, Crouch, if hey. you're still here. And Nelson. <laughs> Crouch. Nelson, too. Crouch was with us. Yeah, Crouch was with us. I'm not sure if he, he had been there before. I don't think he had. I'm sure that Bruce had been there before because yes. uh, Lockwood. Yeah, Bruce had been there. I do not believe... Uh, do not believe that Crouch had been there before, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I could be wrong. Anyway, what is? Oh, I and I did go back and get uh, I did go back and get my steak tacos on uh, oh, the week yeah. after. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they they were just as good the first the second time as they were the first. Yeah. So, just in case you yeah. really wanted to steak know, steak tacos at Dino's. Crouch said he not had okay. not been there. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think he'd been there before, but. Will the Royals be better than the Tigers? Probably not. They actually made me some actually made me some money the other night because it was uh, Tigers just swept the or swept the White Sox. Yeah, um, because it was like in the fifth. It was in the fifth inning, and the the uh, the over under was set at two and a half. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know whoever they were, whoever they were playing. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the, the other team to win by two because the spread on baseball is always one and a half. Yeah. It's always one and a half. So yeah. I'm like, I can't even remember what the other team was. I'm like, yeah, I'm taking the spread. I'm taking them and I'm taking over two and a half. And yeah, they ended up losing five to nothing because their bullpen gave up four runs yep. in the bottom, bottom of the eighth or something. I see. I don't think <laughs> so it's like, yep, came through me there. I always count on the, count on the bullpen to give up, uh, give up something. So, will the Royals be better than the Tigers? I'm not a Royals fan, but I think this is the year that they could sneak up and be a little better than what they've been in years past. Uh, they, they just gave a bunch of money to Bobby Witt. Yeah, they did give a bunch of money to Bobby Witt. They could score some runs. They just pitching still. I'm still worried about that for them, but yeah, I think they'll be fine. Bullpen's a lot better than what it was. That's for sure. I, yeah, I think the Royals will. I don't think that they're going to lose 60 games. They may not have a winning record, but they're not going to lose 60 games, or they're not going to. They're not going to win. They're not going to lose 100 games. I oh, as I say, win. I can almost guarantee you they're going to lose 60. Games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to. They're, they're going to. They're going to win more than 60. That's what I was trying to say. They're going to win more than 60. I'm not sure they're going to be 500, but they're going to win more than 60. They're in the step. They took a step in the right direction. Pitching wise, will be better. I'd put them at 75 to 80 wins this that's year. Not terrible, that's not terrible. And yeah, that that's that's going in the right direction. They might win more than the Red Sox do. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It took that Mariners team. That team can pitch. God, that, that was the most frustrating series I think I've ever watched. Just boy, because they, they pitch so well. Screwed me the other night. Sorry, we lost one to nothing once. Well, yeah, you, you guys actually won. Yes, I, I bet on the Mariners. Sorry, I had a five-team parlay, and everybody else hit. And then the Red Sox somehow won that game against the Mariners. We we won two. We won five uh, one Sunday, and then we won opening day. Mm-hmm. Opening day got we. It was the first time we've won opening day in like ten years or something like that. It, it had been a while, but talk bowling they say. Yeah. Sorry, nobody said that. Yeah. But <laughs> nobody said that. But I was waiting for it. Come to a bowling show, watch idiots drink beer, and talk about baseball. Yeah. You damn right you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, lobby bar, right in the lobby. <laughs> Here I was thinking she was just a raging alcoholic. <laughs> uh, Ten in the oh. morning. <laughs> yeah, I do need to do something though. I got a, uh, I got a new present. Okay, I've been waiting on this for a few months. Okay, so uh, I guess everybody knows about the Nexus bag. Oh, the sweet. big backpack. And so the guy reached out to me a couple months or probably September, October or yeah, September, October and said he had a version two coming. And, uh, so I was gonna, I was gonna, I was about to put out a report card on the other one because I've had the original for like two years and it's, it's still in great shape. It's the only bag that I use. It's the only bag I want to use. And he said he had some upgrades coming. And so, uh, I thought, okay, We'll just wait and see what happens. And so uh, this actually just showed up a couple hours ago. So I thought, okay, we'll just I'm I'm gonna have a regular review and compare the compare and contrast the, the upgrades and the So no, I've not even seen this. It's still he's opening it out of the box as you can see. So. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't I still have the tape on it, so I haven't so. I thought he was about to pull some like April Fool's joke on me or something. Yeah. I caught the very end of your show the other night, the master stream thing. Uh-huh. And when you, I, I told uh, Raylan, I said, he's going to try and get me with some kind of April Fool's thing. Yeah. It's going to happen. So when I left the house, or Red Bull Raylan left for gymnastics, she looked at me and says, Daddy, don't get April Fool's. Yeah. Don't get April Fool's. Yeah, so I'm going to have a separate video to look at this. I actually uh, like that one better than the other one. Well, see, that's the thing is he had, he, he did listen to the feedback. He's got several upgrades on this. He upgraded to YKK zippers, which are a little bit. I didn't have any problem with the zippers on the other one, um, but he did some different things with the uh, the shoe pocket. Here is I would the is a little tight on the old one, getting shoes in and out of, and my dumb ass would always hang on to the side of this, hang on to the mesh to to push the shoes into, and so the there's a little bit of a tear in the corner of the mesh, but that was more my fault. But he did really reinforce this now it's not just the mesh and that's a breathable pocket so your shoes can breathe yeah Mm -hmm. oh sweet is yours uh, your other ones like that uh yeah yeah the other one's like that it's just there was a little the mesh there was no like reinforcement around the edge here and so now there's now there's reinforcement around the edge so it was it was just the mesh full pocket now it's got 
uh, some extra reinforcement around the edges of the pocket. So, what, what is that? Is that a charger? Uh, yes, yes, this is actually a charger. So there's a if you plug a USB, yeah, if you plug a USB into there, there's actually a cord inside the bag where you can charge an iPad. It's got an iPad or a laptop or whatever else sleeve, so you can actually charge stuff oh. that's inside the bag. That's nifty. That's nifty. So charging a fan would be kind of nice. Yep. Um, so here's the pouches, and he did change the pouches because um, the front side on here before. This was just a nightmare trying to get the bottom, the bottom one on there and to actually stick. So um, he did made it make a few changes to some of that stuff. So it doesn't I look as it. bulky. Yeah, it well, and, and that's the thing is that the the original one isn't really bulky unless you put. Um, the big thing was that the, the the big bag, the big accessory bag, had two rows of clips, and trying to get both rows of clips to line up. It's kind of a pain. Um, so it's only got one row of clips now, so it's going to be a whole lot easier to get on. And this one's the same way. The top bag has just got the row of clips, and then you've got the little pockets here to get the stuff on there. Um, this the, the original bag, if you didn't have these accessory pouches on the bag, it's not, you know, it's not that huge of a bag to, to begin with. But if you once you put the accessory pouches on, it gets a little thicker. But Another thing about this that people don't really think about too much is that having a bag that actually stands up, a backpack that stands up, it's amazing. instead of one that like falls down or wants to slouch yeah. to one side or the other. So yeah, I'll have a full, I'll have a full in-depth review, and the other one's going to get, I mean, a, a great report card because other than the corner of the mesh tearing on this on the shoe uh, compartment, I, mine's in great shape. Mine looks great. So. Um, so yeah, we're gonna. I'm looking forward to getting into the nuts and bolts, and there are some some different things that he made, and he did send me a list of the the adjustments that he made to, to everything. So um, yeah, the zippers are the zippers are nice. Hmm. It's pretty cool. And I forget that a, the bulkiness makes it because of the accessory bags going. The yeah, and then there is this yeah. in one of these. There's a waterproof bag in here, and so yeah, this is. Oh, you can put like water bottle or something in there, cold water bottle. That's cool. I yep. like it. Or a, a cleaner bottles or something else oh, where yeah. if they leak, yeah. it's yeah, not going to be true. that big of a problem. It's pretty easy to clean up. So, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, looking at this. And I do have, I think my code is Rosedahl10 for this as well. And I think I actually have it in the description of this video. I can tell and you. so his, uh, his V2 bags are ready to go now. And so I didn't want to start like promoting stuff until he got the V2 yes. bags up. It is um, Rosedahl10 with a capital, with a capital yeah. R, and it will save you $10 off. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's it's an expensive. It's like 150 bucks or something like yeah. that. It might even be a little bit more expensive now. But this is the only bag that I want to use. You oh. can find you can get a, a good Swiss uh, Swiss bag or whatever off of Amazon for like 50 or 60 bucks. I would. This is actually designed for bowling, and it's like a military rucksack. And so I would rather I would rather have this bag. If he didn't send them to me, I would actually buy these. So a little pouch for beers. Exactly, yeah. you yeah. gotta have the important stuff. Yep, yeah, he's he, yeah. he's the one uh, hey. talking about the important issues here. Yeah. yeah, who cares what the bag looks like? As long as you got a little pass for beers, we're good Texas to go. V2. Good to go. Yeah, there, yeah. There's plenty of other things that he, uh, plenty of other upgrades that he made, and we'll talk about. But yeah, really like this bag. Really, really like the bag. <laughs> Oh my. Anyways, carry on. Shameless promotion. We're through our first hour on to hour two. Uh, I'm, I'm, I might April fool as you here in a moment. Oh, I'm sure you will. But we can uh, we can still chat a little bit about the masters, Mark or we can really just shock you, or we can just kind of get into the chat now. Yeah, if you want. we can BS. Uh, we do have the like you said, we have the World Series of Bowling coming up. Yes, we do. I'd like to have our uh, our buddy Zach back on the show after the season completes and uh, talk about. Uh, the season because he's had a heck of a season, man. Yeah, he did really well at the Masters too. Yes, he did. Um, he made it a, a handful of rounds. He made the cut and then uh, bowled several rounds before he got knocked out. But yeah, he just continues to have a really good season. Maybe, uh, maybe the show is just really good luck. Oh, and he he did really well on the league show because the Waco yes. his, his team uh, won the other night on yes, the league they did. show. 
So, and he was, he threw several very good shots. Should have been drafted in the first place, but you know, yeah. whatever. Well, and he's, Mike drop. Uh, yep. He got a, he got his chance and he's made the most of his chance. And so I think he, you know, he's, he's done all you can ask somebody to do. Absolutely. Well, sorry, dude, if I cut you off, you're going to April fools me or shock me. He says you're going to shock me. Um, maybe. Okay. So we brought back some other stuff from uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. They have these things called smoogies and sorbettos. And so they're technically sour beers. Oh, God, no. But they taste like smoothies. Nope. I, when Trevor was over here, I'll let you taste it. Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but This show is no longer PG, folks. <laughs> Trevor was over here, and there was one that's uh, orange vanilla cola. Okay. It doesn't taste like a sour beer. It tastes like you put orange sherbet in a root beer or something. It tasted like an orange vanilla float. Interesting. And so it's just, it doesn't taste like beer because, and that's, you know, Trevor doesn't like sour beer either. No, he, he hates he, it. And he loved this stuff. He can drink it more than I can. I can't drink that crap. Yeah. But he, he can't stand it though. He doesn't, he can drink it, but he can't stand it. This stuff, he's like, oh my God, that is so good. So it's, it's very weird because it's not, it doesn't taste like beer. It's thicker. It tastes like a smoothie. Like you go get juice stop. That's what it, Interesting. That's what it tastes like. Interesting. So I'll let you try it. I won't make you drink it. But. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, we talked about it Lee, off the show. But uh really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. 800 is cool, but 800 are, are at uh, Gage. 800 at Gage, yeah. It was, bragging rights. Yeah, it's, uh, I can't tell you I'd ever shoot 800 in that building. Mm -hmm. I've shot 300 there many times, but uh, 800, I can't tell you I'd, it would ever do there. Well, and this is before the new lanes, too. Like, it was, you know, sure, I've had tons of them, tons of both, yeah. on the wood and then on the lane shield. On the uh, on the new install, I've got one 800, I think, and that's it. Well, guess what? We're tied. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I don't know if you saw, but they got a new lane machine, Gage did. Today. I did see that. Looks like it's the yeah. same one that's at Westridge. Uh-huh. Which, that'll benefit them a lot, I think. Mm-hmm. Until they can't figure out how to put the house shot they've been putting down. <laughs> yeah. I have, the lane surface is the thing there. Should I live stream Thursday on my channel since our teams are going off? Yeah, let's do it. Mm. Why not? Yeah, because we'll be bowling. You're in the three spot, right? Yep. So we'll be bowling each other. I'm in. Um, Jaden's back. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's so right. Uh, I think we're going to go up early. Um, and it's only about the only place I can go. I think. Braylon's talking about skipping gymnastics on Thursday, uh -huh. and we're going to go up there early and drill her. Santa Claus brought her a uh, uh -huh. new ball for Christmas. Uh -huh. It just doesn't have an IMAX on it, all it is. But she was really wanting to do it Saturday, but Tyler was bowling. Yeah. And I really didn't want him to rush. So we're going to go up there uh, on uh, Thursday yeah, early before and let her get her ball drills. Hi. Her little fingers. I know. Uh, we bowl at 6.50 start practice central time. So... <laughs> Yes, I keep forgetting about that. Do you know what anybody know what pair we're on, by the way? Out of curiosity. Yeah. I had my weeks backwards and I thought we were bowling at uh we were bowling you guys on nine and ten this week. But mm -hmm. we were on nine and ten last week, so I'm not a hundred percent certain. Not a big deal. We can figure it out later, but I was just curious. There it is, eleven and twelve. Okay. Yep. Perfect. That is not and 17 and 18, so that's I'm okay. fine. Yeah, that's that I'm okay with that pair. Oh, and guess what pair I had to start on both freaking days this weekend? <laughs> 23 and 24. 17 and 18. And, and I got to hit 23 and 24 and 25 and 26 both days. We didn't have to hit I, I think we finished on 17 and 18 or 19 and 20. So we didn't have to get close to the dragon ramp channels. Awful. Absolutely awful. And then they didn't have the dragon ramps down there. Yeah. All right. so they had them sitting somewhere else. We also have Oh, you bust down something else? We have a, yeah. So I, I can at least save you with uh Okay. I can at least save you with something so we can drink a fast beer if you don't. If I'm sniffling, I'm sorry. It's this time of year. My allergies are kicking my butt. No, oh, I didn't mean to bring so, this down. Where are you going? I need to make a trip. Oh. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Dragon repair is not magical. No, it's not magical at all. The pair to the left and the right of it is not great. Luke's leaving. I don't know where he's going, but... uh yeah. 
talked a little bit about the Masters early. Uh, we didn't go too in depth on it. We mostly talked about the show. Um, we talked a little bit about our tournament that we went in Wichita a couple weeks ago. Luke and I bowled together, and, I, and actually, we were going to make some money. Hopefully, we make some money. So, we got that going. Um, a lot of stuff coming up. I'm bowling in Emporia next weekend. I don't know what Luke's got coming up tournament wise. I'm sure he's got plenty of videos to film, so he'll stay busy doing that. Um, it feels like I haven't had a break in forever. So I think after Emporia, I finally get a break. So it's going to be nice. I'm ready to play golf. So those of you in here like to play golf, um, kudos to you. I'm ready to play instead of bowl for a little bit. I'm looking forward to summer. I'm Jason Krauts. What's in here in the chat. I'm going to bowl a summer double scratch league in Lawrence, Kansas with, with, uh, with him. And James bowls in that league with Zach and Luke bowls in that league. I, don't, I believe he bowls angel, but I'm not hundred percent certain. What's in the bag? Uh, not a ton of my stuff has changed. Uh, I've got a Black Widow 3.0 in there now. I have a Theorem in there now. Um, outside of that, I still pretty much carry around uh, top speed, uh, big time plastic, obviously. Uh, MV Tour. I do not leave the house without the MV Tour. Um, I'm trying to think. I do carry a Ruby around still. That ball still frustrates the piss out of me because it's still not. I was hoping it would be close to the green one, and it's not. I don't think it is anyway. I feel like it's punchier down lane than the green one. Uh, I carry a high road with me if need be. Uh, outside of that, it's, it's pretty much still the same other than the theorem in the uh, Black Widow 3.0. Jason said he's going to try to learn to make a 10-10 too. Oh, I, yes. He the did. 799 Club is really cool though. What are we doing here? Is this is this the one you're talking about? Yep. Oh, my. This is a Sorbetto. And this is... The only place, Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, Evergreen Brewing Company. They have this on tap in York at the place that we went to. Okay. This is a sour ale with cherry, apple, cinnamon, vanilla, and cheesecake. Okay. And so I'm definitely going to enjoy drinking this. I'm kind of kind of scared. Yeah, I'm not going to put it. I'm not going to put it in. Uh, I'm not going to put it in your cup. It's not Folgers. Yeah. Oh my. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna enjoy this. That looks thick. But just yeah. oh god, it better not be crap. Give me a second, let it settle for a second. I know you don't really like sweet stuff. No, but I don't. it just it does not taste like beer. It's a beer, but it does not taste like beer. It's kind no, of that's a, not terrible. Yeah, it's kind of a smoothie. It's more a smoothie-ish, yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's, not something I would drink. Yeah, but it's very weird, but it's not like that. Is definitely I can see why Trevor is this the one Trevor liked, or is it? Did he have another? One? Uh, the orange vanilla cola is the one that he tried. I could see him like. Did he try this one then? No, no. Uh, but I, I could see him liking that one too. Whoop! If James was a drinker, I think he'd even like that. Oh yeah, so seven ninety nine. He, fl he flags the ten. Not to call him out, but it was his first senior set too. Yeah. So I knew he wanted the. I knew he wanted the, the 800 on his first senior set. Still impressive as heck, though. Your first time out after, after becoming an old man and you go out and you shoot 799. You still can't hang your head down on that. You want a 1985, a Cryo Ranger, or a Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA? 85. All right. I'll take an 85, please. All right. So you can this do will that probably be my last it. one then. Yep. Oh, yeah, Jonathan Tiffany, another care package. Uh, another care package? Yep. Yes, please. We're going to have to send them a care package. They've got a baby coming. Yep. I think we'll have to return the favor. Angel has done that before. Send it over. She sent a... Uh, they got some baby coming. Baby care packages out. So, congratulations to Jonathan and his wife, Melissa. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for you guys. You got... Dylan's got another one. He's got another one. He's got one coming. Mm -hmm. It'll be August, I think. So, yeah. He said, did, "Did you hit any PA breweries?" Yeah, you hit the Black Dog. Was it Black Dog? Was that uh, that was in Indianapolis? Oh, that's I don't right. Think that's we right. hit any breweries in Pennsylvania, but we had uh, this stuff is on tap at. Uh, no way! Is it really? That yeah. thick stuff is on tap. Yeah. They had, they had a couple of these, a couple of, uh, not this one specifically, but they had another one that was on tap at the bowling alley. Really? Really nice bowling alley. I had, they had a hot honey pepperoni pizza 
one of the best pizzas I've ever had. Did you just say hot honey pepperoni pizza? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's a pepperoni pizza. They put the cup they put the cupped pepperoni on and then they drizzle hot honey over it, spicy honey. And it's oh my god. Interesting. Yeah. Very, 785 now has a crab uh, it's limited time, but they bring it back frequently. A crab rangoon pizza. Uh, Do you like crab rangoon? Yeah, me too. We need to definitely go try it. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, James just scheduled the live stream. It's up there. So yeah. hit that bell and you guys can hang out with us on Thursday night. Luke and I are going head to head. Jason Kratz is in here is bowling against Mr. Shimwrecker Enterprises and uh, also known as James for the late person. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Any unusual ratings? <laughs> uh, God, this stuff, this stuff looks like. It looks thick. It looks like VA juice. Well, and that's what I was about to say. It looks like Back to the Future 3. It looks like the Wake Up Juice. Yes. We call this Wake Up Juice. That's okay. what this looks like. I don't know, Lloyd. The French are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you've never had a hot honey pepperoni pizza. Uh, I've never had one. It's not, it's not spicy. There's a little bit of heat. Yeah, hot honey on fried chicken. Yeah, it, the... We had uh, a couple years ago in Vegas, Andrew, a, a, a friend of ours, used to work at Red Dwarf Brewing Company, and they had Detroit style pizzas there. The the kind of the deep dish, and then they they put the you know the, the cheese and the sauces on top, and the cheese gets all crispy around the edges, and and then they had hot honey that you put on top of it. And I'm like, well, I don't really want sweet on pizza. But it just, it works. It's like chicken and waffles. Oh, yeah. It's one of those things that's like, well, I don't want syrup on my chicken. And it's like, well, this just works. <laughs> so hot honey pepperoni pizza. And it was amazing. There's a reason it's a thing. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the the, uh, the center that we went to. But it's one of the better. It's I think it's the better one in York. Um, really nice place. We bowled a couple games there. And then we went and bowled a couple games in another place. And then uh, we didn't bowl in Baltimore. But we went down to that to that center. And that was that was pretty okay. <laughs> we got no food. We got no jobs. Our pants are falling off. But I saw you pour it. I thought you were stitching stitching haws up at the Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Yeah. Uh -huh. Does that still? You even still have that here? No, no, I, I threw it away. Thank God. I, I tried to use that because I'm like, well, this is like hot V8 juice. And so I, I, we grew up on. My dad loves pasta and stuff. <laughs> And sometimes you just cook up some elbow macaroni and then put some VA juice in it. Yeah. And it's amazing. And I tried to do that with that. It's like the alcohol and it just screwed it up. It didn't taste good. I don't remember how many. Do you remember the percentage of the alcohol that was in those stupid things? It wasn't very high. It was 5 or 6%. Uh, okay. Just, for some reason, I thought it was more than that. It just made it taste wonky. So terrible. Um. Uh, remember, there's something in here I thought I saw. Maybe I'm going crazy. Yeah, I think I'm going crazy. I think at this point we're just gonna hang out. So yeah, yeah I don't think there's a whole ton else to talk about. Uh, um, yeah. The yeah, the Simo flipping Jr. The double bird. Let's and, be honest, he really didn't do anything. Yeah, uh, Jr. got a got a good break, and he kind of spun around on the approach while he was walking back, and um, I think this is while. Simo was basically out of it anyway, and so he just turned around and you know, still savage though. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's hilarious. A lot of people, oh my god, he needs to be fine. I'm sure he was fine, and he, oh, this is oh god, I it got all, got a, a bunch of people all fired up about nothing. Just the the still but, video of him standing there like this, yeah, it cracks me up. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's been on savage bowling memes. And, oh yeah, um, but. Hey, Simo sent something. Jr. posted something. Is like I didn't even know what happened until I saw some people posting about it. And then he's like, "When I did see it, I didn't care." He's like, "I like Anthony and I are cool. We don't." And and Simo sent him something and said, "Hey, sorry, man. It just you know, eat of the moment. Whatever else, shouldn't have done it. It was childish. Whatever else." And Jr. didn't. Jr. doesn't care about stuff like that. Whatever you want to say about Jr. He just he's like, "Whatever." He's like, "I know Anthony did whatever." Did you notice that Bull TV Nico's in here? So I'm gonna actually parlay off that here. Uh -huh. Did you notice that uh, the new commentator this week? So bad. Yeah, he's and, terrible. And so, well, there's two of them. Yeah. 
that were awful. Yeah. Now, Craig Graham that was on there, he was fine, but he wasn't talking a whole lot. Um, but the two new guys, apparently there's something going on with Flanagan. Has to be. Because they dodged, they deleted a lot of comments asking about it. They deleted a lot of comments where people were bashing the new guys. Uh, but these new guys knew nothing about bowling. No, they, they didn't know, know that you couldn't go past the foul line. They didn't know that if the rack hit a pin, it didn't count. They didn't know anything about bowling, period. And they were these, oh, these super kind of hipster, yeah, yeah, whatever, just. Uh, Did you notice, too, they were trying to commentate it, like, on the stream, more. like it was, like, live on ESPN? Yeah, Fox. yeah, they were trying to do it. And he things. rings the 10 pin. Oh, my God, that was. Sounded, he sounded like the uh, Mighty Ducks 3, the, yes. kid, the kid commentator. Yes. Yeah. No, oh, I tell you what, these guys, whatever else. And I know I'm just, watching that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen Mighty Ducks in a while, but yeah, he reminded me of the, the over-enthusiastic kid announcer on Mighty Ducks It's 3. like, bro, we're like first squad of qualifying. Let's just mm -hmm. chill out a little bit. You got a lot of bowling left. Yeah. But they got really dodgy about it. Um, so people sent some messages in. And uh, I think Patrick Martinez, that works for him, was also getting a little frustrated with people sending him stuff. It's like, I'm, he still, Flanagan still works for us, but that's all I'm going to say. And that was it. And then he got pissy with people asking stuff. So uh, apparently there's, there's a thing there. I don't know what it would be because Flanagan's amazing. So maybe, maybe he wants more money. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I really have no idea. I just yeah, I, I have no idea. I don't want to speculate, but maybe their USBC doesn't agree with the way he's producing shows. I, I don't know. He's he's been doing an amazing job. Everybody loves him. Uh, they hate these new guys, and so I have no idea what could be going on. I haven't heard anything to any effect, any direction. But the new guys suck. If Flanagan's not a part of the World Series, they're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of bowling. For, that's two weeks of bowling, like, every day for however long. And in my opinion, Flanagan should be on Fox. If they, Yeah, I mean, if they have these other, other idiots commenting, it, it's going to be... I'd rather have. I'd rather listen to Randy Peterson. I, I think people will cancel their subscriptions over these other commentators. I just turn... I, I go full screen so I don't have to see the chat because the chat, the bowl TV chat is the worst thing it's in human history. It's worse than any bowling forum that you can find on Facebook. It's just absolutely offensively terrible. And so I always get rid of the chat. Yeah, it's uh, not the, great. Yeah. The commentary yeah. has always been Flanagan and Craig Graham are really good. And especially Tom Hess, whenever they get him, he's really good. I really like listening to Tommy. The only thing that drives me nuts about Tom is he, he wrote, he's too golfy for me. <laughs> yeah. He just whispers in there. <laughs> yeah. Brad, Brad Miller stepping up here in the seventh frame. <laughs> it, it looks like he might've just got around that one a little bit. And had to, yeah, that drives me nuts. Yeah. Brad so, had a good week. Yeah, yes, he did. Brad had a good week. Um, uh, but I like Tommy. Yeah. It's just just let, let's, less of the golf commentating. You can actually talk. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. But these idiots are beyond the pale. Yeah, I, they're bad. Everybody was screaming about him, complaining about him. So I'm like, well, okay, well, I'll turn the commentary on. I knew Flanagan wasn't commentating, but, you know, normally when I, I was at work, I think, when or I was in the office when I had a, you know, I don't want to be blasting stuff in cubicles or whatever. Why not? But People would have been just as annoyed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. PTQ but, tomorrow, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I turned stuff on. I'm like, just to see what people were talking about. And it's like, oh my God, this is so much worse than people were even, even, that was terrible. Even complaining about. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. So yeah. hopefully they don't roll that into uh, uh, the World Series. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I think you're getting these guys, especially with a couple weeks. If yeah. they're out there, so I think they want, and this this may not. I think they want someone to stick strictly to bowling and not do the goofy fun stuff he does during qualifying. He does kind of go off the rails sometimes, and they just talk about stuff. But I don't. How how can you have like three or four hour long streams or squads and stick to the bowling stuff the entire time? You can't. You got to entertainment in there. 
yeah, I would rather him have interesting different conversations and just keep the chat engaged. And yeah, because when you're in qualifying, I mean, it's kind of, there's not a whole lot to talk about. It's like, oh, somebody threw a strike or somebody did this or whatever else. And it, people can see what's going on. They don't need the play by play on just constantly nonstop. That's boring as hell. I mean, on, on the finals, on the TV show, that's one thing, but just watching qualifying, just hang out, engage with the chat and talk about some fun stuff. It doesn't have to be again, like we're, I mean, we're, we're bouncing all over the place. We're talking about baseball. We're talking about whatever else. It doesn't have to be strictly yeah. specifically serious bowling the entire freaking time. It, actually, James just hit it right on the head. Flanagan does does a better job than anybody else in the world to building and telling stories over the course of a tournament. Yes, he yeah. does. That is 100% facts. Mm -hmm. Flanagan is just the best in the business, and I don't care what anybody says. It's, uh, yeah. It is what it is. He's and very good at what he does, and he genuinely loves bowling, and he loves the bowlers. Yeah. So I was actually pretty excited when they brought Flanagan as a part of the, the Bull TV thing with the PBA mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, I thought that was pretty awesome. I thought it was a good fit. Uh, but obviously something's going on there, and hopefully they figure it out soon because it, Bull TV will suffer without it. Yeah, I would. Th that's half the reason I'd like to get out to holiday doubles or one of the nightmare double or the. I think it's nightmare doubles. You come to the ten k doubles. Or uh, yeah, whatever else. I'd just like to get out there and get on a you know kind of talk my way onto a live stream with him one time and just kind of, just kind of hang out. I think that'd be a whole lot of fun. Um, he yeah he always does the Springfield doubles. You need to go back out there for that. Mm -hmm. So I mean you're pretty, you're going to Branson this year. So you're probably not going to make it out there twice. But probably not. They announced but, they announced the dates of it, and I don't remember exactly when it was, but I just saw it a couple weeks ago, or a week ago or whenever it was. Mm -hmm. They could, they could have got Emil. Do, yeah, I mean Emil's doing it, but I think he's trying to do his own thing and a lot of stuff now. What is what is it? I think I mean yeah he's got his own YouTube channel, and I think he's kind of trying to go his own direction. Bull stream or something like that in the bull stream. I, I think it, yeah I think that's what it is. Full stream TV or and something. Emil like Williams is great too. No, he, Emil's great. Yeah, yeah, Emil does a great job. He really does. I I one hundred percent agree with that. Yep. Springfield doubles is the first week in August. Okay, so yeah, it's it's still it's towards the end of the year. Wow. Yeah, there's there's Close no way that I'm listening to any. I don't listen to a lot of commentary. I like listening to Mike, but generally speaking. I just want to see what's going on with the bowling. And most of the time I'm working. And so I just put it on. That's what I do. I, I just put it on to have it on. If I have a minute, I'll check it out or watch for a few minutes. Just have it on in the background so I can keep up with what's going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the guys that did it this week, awful, wretched, terrible. So I'm wondering, uh, John Landers says, I'm honestly one, or honestly, I'm wondering if it was a USBC decision and Mike might be back for PBA events. I don't know. He's, he missed. He missed something else recently too, didn't he? I'm not sure. Maybe it was just this one event. But yeah, if he, if he's back for the PBA stuff, then that that's fine. That'd be great. Um, we'll have to see because the the World Series of Bowling is starting very soon. So starts tomorrow. PTQ for the doubles is tomorrow. The Roth Holman doubles. So we we haven't had a chance to talk about it on the show, but Kyle Sherman shocked the the bowling world by announcing he had a a child here recently. Yeah. Nobody knew anything about it, and all of a sudden, Kyle Sherman. Oh yeah, we just had it. We had a kid. Yeah. Oh, really? Crap. Yeah, that's actually because uh, Brad moved to St. Louis to be with Kyle, and then or to be closer to Kyle's to make it easier for that stuff. And then Kyle moved to North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, something like that, to to be with his his girlfriend who was having the baby. And well, Dennis is out there that does his videos too, though. Uh -huh. His buddy Dennis that does his editing. Mm -hmm. He's out there with him, so he can do more videos. That's the other um, thing, too. Yeah. Really, outside of bowling in Kansas City, he doesn't really have anything there for him, other than family, of course, obviously. But mm -hmm. there, Brad doesn't really have anything around that he can that's going to help, obviously, make him money and or benefit his videos. Yeah. So it's not like he's going to KC tournaments and doing vlogs. Yeah. So uh, he'll. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Iowa Winter Classic, the Ebonite, the Ebonite Winter Classic. That's a tournament I wouldn't mind to bowl sometime. Uh, Joe uh, Inglekiss, Inglekiss, I think. That sounds familiar. I believe yeah. he's the one that runs, owns the center, I believe. He is uh, uh, He's all fantastic. 
Yeah, yeah it's West, Joe Ingle kiss. West Virginia, whatever. He, uh, yeah. West Virginia, Carolina, same East, thing. Somewhere. Sorry. Whatever. It's 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 east. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. It, not it's not around here. No, we're just kidding. Um. But yeah, congratulations to to Kyle on that. That's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. When uh when I found that out, I was like, what? I thought he, we were all thought he was just rehabbing an injury. Yeah. He is still. He. I think he's back from whatever he he's is. back from. But yeah, they just had the kid, and so. Still, that's a well kept secret in the bowling world that came out of nowhere. It's like, oh yeah, Kyle just had a kid. Yeah, and and that's that's the thing is I knew about it months ago, but it's it's it seemed like it was one of those things that's like it's a hush hush. Nobody wanted anything to get out about it and whatever else. And so like, oh, okay, well I know, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know break the news yeah. or drop the secret or whatever. Brad so. told me at uh, uh, one of the last tournaments, Aaron's. Yeah, I, I, I talked yeah. whatever one he was at because I talked to him a little bit about some other stuff yeah. too. It was one of the December tournaments. Yes, yes, that sounds right. I think unless it was Labor Day, I, I don't think it was that long ago because you just had the baby, and that the Labor Day has been like six, seven months ago already. Brad and I talked when he told me about it, we were at um, Aaron's. I don't remember we were born in Aaron's. Okay. I really don't remember what we were bowling. Well, it's been yeah, so long. that was that might have been the grand finale or it was a grand finale. Oh, okay, what was that one? Yeah. Yes. When I talked to him a little bit, it was at uh, Aaron's. And I can't remember what we had. Going yes, there. Right. that's where. Well, I no, no, no. I mean, Olathe. 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 Yeah, I can't remember what we were doing there. It might have been Labor Day because we were, him and I were discussing his some of his frustration with the uh, with the tour with the uh, he was trying to get. Commissioner's exemptions on some stuff, yeah, and he's even offered the even offered to do stuff with their with their channel to do stuff with the PBA to be like, hey, we'll do this if you let me get these commissioner exemptions. And we'll we'll do some yeah. behind the scenes stuff for the PBA and help them out. And yeah, as Tom wasn't really interested in it, and that's <laughs> so here we are. But uh, yeah. Brad's he's got a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of work to do. He's had what two decent tournaments basically. Yeah, and yeah, the Masters was a good showing. Was a good showing. He's he he had a really bad draw in the round of six in the first round of the bracket because uh, when he, he shot, got uh, when he, he shot, got Miss Ube. Yeah, he shot the third highest set of the first round and got beat by the first or second highest set of the first round. Here's what we were talking about the other day. I love the Masters format, mm-hmm. one of the best formats in my opinion in bowling. Mm-hmm. I just wish we would make it instead of total pinfall, we'd make it matches. Yeah, because matches create drama. You could mm-hmm. be down 0 2 and then you come storming back. It just to me, that creates drama. Yeah. I know why they don't do it that way because if you're going to have that many people making match play and it's double elim, then you're going to have to speed things up somehow. Yeah. But I, I, it is a kick in the crotch if you're in that situation. Brad bowled really well yeah. against Upe. Mm-hmm. But sometimes that happens. You get a bad couple draws and. You know, you lose a match with seven shooting seven hundred, and somebody else wins a match shooting five fifty. Look what Frankie did to uh, Andrew Anderson. Oh my God, he was down one hundred and thirty. Yeah, that was nuts. Yeah, it was. It was. It was Andrew Anderson, right? Yes, yes, yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it, I was like, oh, this match is over, and I kind of flipped around and come back. Three games total pins is less fluky and still plenty of drama versus best of two or three. If matches were best of three or five, I get it. that's that's what I would go. Yeah, that, that, that is if we go three or five, absolutely, you go three or five. Yeah, yeah. The, the two or three I don't like, but three or five I just like the drama. That's mm-hmm. all. Yeah, three or five would, would would create the same fairness as as total pins, but add some more drama. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't know. I really liked it when they did the best of seven during the PBA. The, those <sighs> those couple weeks. Yes, the New Year's the New Year's Day tournament at Olathe. Because I remember it wasn't Labor Day; it was towards the end of the year. And yeah, we bowled the terminal late, and that's when I remember talking to him about. Something. I don't think I bowled that day. I think I was hungover. <laughs> yeah, college drinking. Yeah, I was college drinking. Yeah. I think I was hungover though. To be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. The, a matter of fact, yes, I know I didn't bowl that day because there was no way in heck that you would ever get me to bowl first thing in the morning the next day after drinking all night. Yeah. No. Ten, ten o'clock on the first on. The- at Olathe? Yeah, no. I'm good on that. I'll pass. Oh, and then I got to go bowl in Olathe? No. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. 
I'm sure everyone saw because I posted on Facebook page, but a four man team in our house broke a national record a few weeks ago. Sweet. Yes, because it was uh, it was against you guys. <laughs> I remember you posting that. Oh, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was against their team. That's a bummer. Yeah, the man with the fantastic name. Mm -hmm. That would that you know what though? It's still I'm sure at some point in time that had to be you, you had to be sitting there going, okay, this is really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, At least like, I would think so, anyways. Like you guys shooting, uh, was it you guys? Yeah, 70 or 29, 40 something. 29, 60. Last week, yeah. No. Oh. Oh, are you talking on Thursday? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, that, yes, it was a big night. We, the, I was the low man at 709. Yeah. And so that, that's one of those things where we had the high set in the league at 2880 something mm -hmm. for like 16 weeks. And all of a sudden healers broke it. They got to 29, 20 something. And then Wagner's team broke it after like a week after that with 29, 30 or 20, a higher 29, 20. And then you guys are at 29, 40. I thought that we were going to have the highest. I'm like, nobody's going to make it to 28, 80. And then that's been, it's been broken three times now. Yeah, it was last week. We had twenty nine forty so, last week. Yeah, I was yeah. the low man at seven hundred nine. Because uh -huh. uh, Jason, yeah, Jason shot seven ninety nine. Yep. You shot a big set. I had Norm seven. Shot I, a big thought, set. I left more. I left some out there. Baton shot a big set. Baton bowled pretty good the other night. Baton's been kind of fighting some things. And last mm -hmm. Thursday night, he finally started to click. Baton, I love him, and I think in his head, I think he's got too much PBA brain. That Zach Rhodes is doing the same thing. Too. It's just like trying to do too much of this. You get used to bowling on tougher patterns, yep. and then you you're, you try to bias your direction. It's like, okay, well, league is league, but I want to bowl well at the tournaments that are going to make me money or the, the PBA tournaments. Zach does the same thing. He's like, because he bowled awful on Saturday. James went 300 something over on Saturday, and Zach didn't have a good day at all. Um, he pulled a whole lot better on you know, yesterday, right? But Zach's like, yeah, I just don't. Yeah, no, the same game by the way that I had two seventy with the yeah. batter. He shot three hundred. Three hundred, yeah. Yeah. He after I did that, he looks at me. He goes, "Well, pressure's off now." Yeah. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, he's it. Uh, there. Uh, we also had a, a lost train of thought. Completely lost train of thought. But yeah, we also had a big set. For a city team event too, mm. with uh, myself and Trevor and Eric Moore, uh, yeah. Jesse and I don't remember what it was, but we snapped posting the Russell's team off by two, mm -hmm. and I don't remember what it, it was a big number. I think we, we think we averaged like almost two forty as a team for a five man something mm -hmm. like that. It was a big set. All of us to collect that nice little hundred dollar check. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and it was one twenty. I got a hundred twenty dollar check from it, but you know who's counting. Please don't do that against me on Thursday, okay? We're not on seventeen and eighteen, so that's okay. Yeah, we're uh, and that that's we're trying to get. We won the we won the first half of the league. We got second. And, yeah, and you guys were right behind us. Yeah, and I so, would say right behind. Well, yeah, I mean we 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 had a really really good first half. Five man team was thirty six sixty five. Yeah, that's a big number. That was on three and yeah. four, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'd say you what, though. Eric in here is chatting about that. That is one of the most fun nights I've had in bowling in a long time. Mm -hmm. Because we were just having a good time. Obviously, we're bowling well, so it helps. But uh, just just kind of shooting the shit back and forth between everybody. It was a it was a good time. And we all said the same thing. That it was one of the more fun times we've had bowling in a long time. Sometimes even when you're bowling good, it's tight. Instead of being uptight and just relax. Yeah. It, it was a lot of fun. So. Uh, Tuesday night, I hardly didn't talk to anybody. I just kind of kept to myself. Yeah. I went and played with Raylan a little bit, and I was about it. Yeah, see? That was a blast. One of the best times I've ever had. Man, it was a blast, mm -hmm. man. We, we just all just BS'd, and it, it was it was great. And to be able to snap posting off by 2-6 makes me better. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor had to have them all, too. Oh, yeah? And it was the sensor solid he finished it off with. But yeah, he had to have them all in the tent. Man. What made it even better is we were on three and four, and Poston and Russ were sitting there at the little pinball machine where it's at, and they kept uh -huh. sticking their head out the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Daddy. Yep. 
My last 800 was in September. So say you're saying you're due. Yeah. Crouch, if you quit egging him on, because so then he'll do it. you're telling me there's a chance. Oh. No, well, it, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Probably shouldn't get mic'd up, but uh, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely just, not. No, no, we don't want to do that. But yeah, we've got we've got a tough we've got a tough finish to the season because we've got you guys, and then we got Zach Rhodes, and his team's doing better this half than they were last half, and then we got Trevor's team, and then we got Russ's team. Yeah, to finish off the year, Trevor's got, team. My goodness, have you seen how they've been getting just hosed? <laughs> Even with Eric, even with Eric going absolutely berserk, um, but yeah, we got we got twenty four last week That's with night. Tyler shooting eight hundred, um, and we would kind of like to get a hundred points the last five weeks. But I don't. It's you guys are going to be tough. Uh, I mean, the rest of the year is going to be tough. It's just going to be tough. So we'll see what happens. But it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah, and Trevor's team is the highest pinfall by a lot. Yeah, they're ridiculous. They are absolutely ridiculous. Everybody's shooting their shot at them. Trevor fries out to me every every Friday. Mm-hmm. He just texts me and he's like, why am I a shit magnet? Yeah. I told him, I was like, I don't know. It just is what it is. It is what he, it is. he hasn't had, I mean, he's still averaging 230, but. Still not, of, he's still not himself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been kind of a rough year. The left side's been a little weird at Royal. He didn't bowl great last year, either. But, yeah. Now, like three years ago, it was easy. Dead ball. Yeah, he averaged like 250, didn't he? Yeah. Well, that was my first year back as a lefty, and I almost aver- I averaged 229.2 or 3 or so. I almost averaged 230 my first year switching back. That's how easy it was, and then it, it, the last couple of years, it's not been quite as easy. But it, it's been how long has it been now since we bowled together in draft league? Three years. It's yeah. Been a while. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed bowling with you guys. We've, I've had a good time bowling this year too. I, I really have. I've, I've enjoyed it. That's the first time. This is actually the first time I've ever gotten to bowl with Baton. Uh, yeah. So getting to know John a little bit is cool. Obviously, I've never really I've been around Norm. I've never bowled with Norm. Uh, and then Crouch is actually the first time. Well, Crouch and I bowled a bowled a, one of the Baker doubles at Gage before, but yeah. And then you're bowling the the doubles. Yeah. This summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, since he's gonna make me bowl the summer league. Yeah, yeah. It helps. It helps, man. I'm telling you. Even just the three games a week is better than nothing. Four. You're four. Yeah. Uh-huh. Better than nothing. It is. It's no different. If you play, if you played golf this summer. Yeah. If you played golf once a week. Every week throughout the entire oh, yeah. summer, I guarantee your game would go from here to here. I'm going to try to bowl or golf more. Angel hasn't been out but one time in the last three or four years, and it was that one shitty day at Prairie or whatever. Whatever we went and played with Trevor and Grandpa and Paul and whatever that day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Western yeah. Hills or whatever. That was you, me, one. Angel. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one time she's been out in the last three or four years. Well, it's not the place I want to go. And no, I did not ask yeah. you. You asked me. Yeah. Just say no. <laughs> I promise. I think this month is when I start looking at what story people season were for this year and scrap league. Yeah. I've had yeah. a pretty consistent year. Yeah. Oh, that's for looking sure. forward to the draft next year. I'm still inside the cut line, and then I shot seven something last week. And so I think I'm going to be, I'm going to be a team captain, but I'm going to be like 16th, 17th, or 18th. Had and Trevor's Trevor's not bowling next year. And he's not. And there's Johnny. Oh, okay. There's Johnny. So okay. So there's a couple names off the list then. There's a couple captains, so that just dropped down the list is what it is. Yeah, because uh, Johnny was right behind me. I was asking James about that last week when we were on our show, and Johnny, I was the 17th cap as of last week before last Thursday. I was the 17th on the list, and Johnny was 18th on the list. Yep. So and I'm not convinced we'll have 18 teams next year. We'll have to see. I was talking with yeah. Jesse, and he thinks he thinks that the draft, with so many people not getting drafted the last couple of years, he thinks it's really kind of it might drive down the wrong to way. Or something. Five or sixteen. Yeah. I'm really curious to see what the payout is though with the thirty dollars, the five dollar raise. And I completely forgot about that because Angel is the one that pays everything. Yeah. I forgot we went to thirty to about thirty dollars. Yeah. So I was telling Amanda, it's like you know what, we didn't win the first half. We're not going to win this half either. Uh, we, we, but we can we can get on our horse and go. Place awful good. Take a second. We're going to make some money. Yeah. 
So and that's, that's what I was thinking too, is we're, we're going to make some money. Even, I mean, we're still, we're middle of, we're like eighth or ninth right now. For sure. It's 10 grand. That was added to the price. Point. In the second, in the second half, but the first half we won that. And if we can have a few solid weeks to finish out the season, then. So you do the math. I want to say it was around 10 grand. Yeah. That was because, Yeah. Because it was one of those things where they raised the lineage a little bit, but it's kind of like, okay, well, like and everybody's like, yeah, it wasn't that much. And everybody's like, okay, well, we were paying twenty five. Sure, let's just just go to thirty. It's a scratch league. It's easier to pay go to thirty. It's easier to pay thirty than it is twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, some dumb, some dumb number, or whatever. It's like, yeah, just put. How much does individual stuff usually pay if you're top three and everything? Um, yes. Well, so our year, league does MVP points too. So yeah, the year that Keeler averaged two forty, he walked out with eleven hundred dollars. Uh, he profited off the league. Yeah. Him and Russ have uh, Russ routinely profits off the league, but yeah, if you're in the top, like if you're one of the top three captains, you're going to get two hundred bucks just out of captain money. It's going to be one eighty, one seventy, one sixty, whatever else, just for captain money. And then if you're in the top three in the league, that's going to be several hundred dollars. And then if you have a top uh, uh, a high thirty or a high ten or whatever else. Plus the captain bonus. Yeah, the captain bonus. Yeah, the captain bonus is for the top two or three. It's like 150, 160, 170, 180, something like, something like that. Um, if you're in the top, if one of the top teams, you that's several hundred dollars. Um, if you're in the top in points one and percentage of points one, that's also some money too. And so, yeah, it's not going to be – the better bowlers in the league, it's are going to walk out with a grand, oh, $1, yeah. 1200 bucks at the end of the season. I'm hoping we can get back up there Easy. and finish, finish strong. If we can finish strong, hoping after the things change, we're, we're at least around five hundred piece. That's what I'm it, hoping for. It should be more than that. I would take it. I would expect for us, my team, uh, six seven hundred bucks, six seven hundred bucks a person. I would think just because of, and I, and that's the funny thing is that I am not individual points. Everybody, but James is not really doing that great, but it's just collectively, we had a good first half. We have, uh, um, some other, you know, we got a high 10 or something in there. Getting but, Jaden yeah, back I, I would too. expect getting seven, six or 700 bucks a person. Getting Jaden back. Helps. So yeah, that'll help. And that, that was a big factor last week too. So it can be Eric if you choose. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, tell Trevor he's going to, he's, he's hitting three hole this week. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, Eric's going to be a team captain. I'm going to be up there. And so it's going to be, we'll have a little different dynamic next year. All right. 270, 218. I won't be there. I've got to mm -hmm. get on my pony. And I don't think it'll get there. Especially if we drop. I don't even know what the last, where are you at now? I was at 222. Yeah. Point. Two or three, and then I shot seven yeah, so or something. I'm not close. So I'm at two twenty two point six or seven. I'm not close, but I'll be higher on the board next year. So which is yeah, which is not a bad thing. But mm -hmm. I'll stay in the four hole next year. Well, you yeah. could technically you could put yourself in the three hole if you really wanted to, there, El Capitan. Yeah, because Eric's going to be he's in the top three or four averages. Uh -huh. So James is going to be James is going to end up being the high average because he's got everybody else by two or three pens, and that's just not. That's just not something that's going to change in the last three weeks or four okay. weeks of the season. As of now, Trevor and Johnny don't return, and they are not returning 100%. Uh -huh. uh, don't return. Low captain is Alex Hardman at 224, 220.4, 220.45. Doesn't include Alex. We can throw So that would be last. Yeah, that would be last Thursday's scores. Yeah. And my average went up because I was, again, 220.2 or 222.2 and then shot 7056. I can't remember. It was 70 something. So mine went up a little bit. Honestly, I'm cool not to make a captain spot. I'm fine to just bowl. And that's the cool thing about the league is that I there are only a very, very few people in that league that I wouldn't want to bowl with. And it's not like, oh, my God, screw this. I don't want to bowl with them. It's like, eh, whatever. I'll bowl with them. But um, – even even some of the people that I don't necessarily want to bowl with, I wouldn't have a problem bowling with them. I wouldn't prefer to bowl with them. You can them. make fun out of anything, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the the people that are in this league, I would be okay bowling with all of them. 
I would prefer bowling with it's ninety. Certain. With I would prefer bowling with like ninety to ninety-five percent of them. Correct. Yes. So, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I don't worry about getting drafted. I've never had a bad. I've I've been drafted in the league six, seven times, and have always been just fine. Even last year, when our team was last the entire year, I liked our team. I had fun bowling with our team. Last year or the year before. It was it was last year because I bowled with Jesse and Ryan and uh, Calvano. You guys got last last year. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah, because Calvano averaged one seventy five or something. Calvano had a rough year. I haven't he seen had a him rough around. Year, I don't know if he's still bowling. I I don't know, but I he's a great guy. I love bowling with him and fantastic. I mean, guy. we were whatever. He had a bad year. We didn't compete, but it was a, I like bowling with Jesse. I like bowling with Ryan. I like bowling with uh, Calvano. Cal, um, speaking of Calvano, dude doesn't fine. fry out. Yeah, he doesn't. He just stays so, even killed. You yeah. never know. Uh huh. So yeah. Yeah, take notes. Yeah. No. <laughs> She's talking to you. Like, mies, mies. <laughs> hey, baby. Because oh, yeah. you have never fried out and punched Ask anything Ask in your life. <laughs> Ask Ask I had to say it, though. Mies, 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 mies. April Fools. She was talking about me. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's foot. an indent someplace Aspen. on Aspen. 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 Yeah, actually right around Aspen. there. Yeah. Aspen. Aspen. I punched the Aspen. shit out of that step. Aspen. I'm surprised Aspen. my hands didn't break that day. Aspen. I was expecting Come a boxer fracture like Big Riley had. Uh, I thought it was going to be fracture. Amanda would have been so mad Where, at me. Oh, my wife would have been mad at me. Okay. I know. Man, she would have been so mad. I'm glad I didn't do that. I'm sad that this day is by far the best season I've had based on average alone and a few weeks solo until fall. I know. You're not going to bowl at all this summer? I'm assuming you're not bowling because of the kiddo. Just guessing. Buck, buck. Come here. Strong dog. Come Take here. some time to practice. Come buck. I will tell Strong people my Hi, suggestion buddy. is Hi, buddy. don't ever tell yourself mm -hmm. you'll not bowl yep. the summer, and but you'll go practice. Yeah. Because it's always so hard to get out and go bowl. So come just here. bowl the summer if you can, and you can swing it. Storm dog. Come here. Missy, can you come up here? Can you make it? Can you make it, sweetie? I don't think you can make it. Come here. Buck, buck. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, buddy. Miss, miss. Hi, buddy. What are you doing, buck? Sorry, doggies are down here hanging out with us. Come on, buck. Come on. Oh, my God. Hi. There he is. You doing a buck, buck? Face looks a lot better. Yep. Yep, he's getting the he's getting most of the fuzz back on his face, and the injury is is healed just fine. So, <laughs> John Lander, yeah, but Hall, at least you haven't pulled a Riley. Angel will tell you, I tried. I gave it an effort at uh, Gage once. I punched the hardwood floor. I okay, I'm short. Reminder, if you don't know that, but I'm walking. They have uh, two steps to walk up. Okay, to get up to the to the settee area, and as I was walking up, I laid into the hardwood floor there, and I, it hurt. I played it off, but it hurt. I hurt a lot, actually. Yeah. Uh, yes, you do. Hi. I don't think my, Amanda will forgive me or would forgive me if I, if I broke my damn hand. Yeah. I believe all of your bowling balls would be for sale the next day. I, you're you're not wrong. Bit my damn hand. I look at it. Bit my damn. <laughs> Did you see they're making a second one? Yeah. That's amazing. Happy Gilmore too, Happy baby. Happy Gilmore too. Any predictions but on the World Series of Bowling? Chubbs, Chubbs uh, did, did die. die. He did yeah. die, yes. Uh -huh. So you got to take, I think, Carl in Weathers. my opinion, you got to take him out of the equation. Yeah, that that's really unfortunate. Because, Wait a minute. Uh, Chubbs died in the well, first movie. Well, he died in the movie anyway, so yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't have to worry about him. Yeah, either. but, yeah, Carl Weathers. Rest in peace. Yeah. Any predictions on the World Series of Bowling? Good question. Honestly, I haven't thought about it a ton. We've thought about more Masters prep for this week. Zach Wilkins. I mean, you can't just you can't say Zach. Well, Zach Zach's gonna have a he's gonna have a good tournament. He may not make any shows. I, I I I'm not saying that he's gonna make shows. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna saying he's not gonna make shows. But Zach Wilkins is gonna have a good World Series. That's I I, can, I definitely know I can that. agree with that. I mean, it's hard not to, the guy is quietly having just a Baltimore's winning, but they're not winning. Calm down, no. calm down. Caitlin Clark. Oh, I I picked uh, I picked Iowa Iowa to win some stuff. Too, Are they actually so. playing right now? Yeah. The LSU and Caitlin Clark game. Yep. Oh God, I want to watch that too. I told my buddies bowling the spring I can sub occasionally, but once Hudson comes, well. it'll be a few and be it'll be few and far between. I mean, we can sign off now if you want. So what, Wait, give away the, a ball cut because you um, don't give away they're one the third quarter. Let's give away a ball cut, guys. Yeah. yeah. 
Let me, sure. Here, let me close it down. Let me grab these here. Yeah, and you can pick, you know, pick any one that you want. Let's. Me? All, all the pressure on me? Yeah, you've been reading comments. You, you got somebody in there. Oh, that's true. Let me take a look here. Oh, the Orioles. Look okay, here. the Orioles are winning. Top of the ninth. Get it done, baby. Get it done. But I've got the. I've got another one. The Orioles minus one and a half. Actually, so the, has Clint Harris won one from us yet? I don't think so. Clint, have you? Yeah, because Clint's are always on here. Clint interacts with me a ton, and I talk with him a ton. He's always following our stuff. Clint, have you won one? Have you won one of these breakdown pair ball cups yet? I don't believe I have sent. I don't. I don't think we've sent anything to Clint, so he's got to win one of them anyway. If he has not. He's getting one. How many do you want to give away? One or two? One. Let's let's uh. One? I'll, I'll take one to Jason too. Let's take one. To, he's he's always in here. Crash. Take one to him on Thursday. I'll let you take it to him. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're the next was, contestant. On, by the way, did yeah. you see D. Rod Booker was a contestant yeah. on The Price Is Right? Yes, and he was, and that was his strike song. Yes, The Price Is Right. That's so amazing. Did I you see? Yeah. Color. Okay, so Clint, you've got a ball cup coming. Let's yeah. pick a color here. Yeah, Clint. I don't know how you want to do this. Pick your pick your color here, because we've got the. Uh, this is kind of like a space galaxy type of thing. This is like a salmon kind of pink. This is a black graphite kind of look. This is a kind of a, a reddish black. That's a chrome. Chrome. Yeah, it's almost yeah. chrome. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is more chrome. Yeah. And then um, the last ones are just some solid colors. We got lavender. We got pink. We got red. We got salmon. We got teal. And then this uh, one, right? And then this one's the last yeah. one. Yeah. More purple even. All right. So and I am going to give away. I haven't done. I need to give something away. On the next show, I'm going to give away a breakdown pair. Something from the breakdown pair apparel, either a hoodie or a t-shirt. Probably a t-shirt because summer and warm weather's coming up. Uh, but I want to do a trivia question. I need to try to think of a trivia question. Mm -hmm. And the winner of the trivia question. I'm a throwback question to your um, Rising Grind series. Oh, yeah, that's a fantastic sure. idea. Man, Just gotta think of like an old topic right or there. some comment that you said and see if someone can guess it. That's a fantastic I think idea. I gotta remember myself. Well, you don't have to. He's doing the trivia. It's okay. I'll do it. Yes, I'll. But I'll get. Okay, Clint, is it this one? The red is kind of reddish black. Uh, John Lander said that. Anyway, yeah, he said red black. Yeah, that one. That one's that one. So, yep, we're gonna send this one to Clint. All right, give me that one. Then. So let me mark it so I can. Yep, send that to Clint, and then Jason, whichever one you want. Matt, Clint Harris is the one in our Discord, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yes. he's yes. always posting his... about his his. This kid popping off and doing, yeah. <laughs> what year did Roy E. Munson win the Iowa State Championship? So, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I, Jason, yeah, Jason, whichever. If you're still in here with us. Want, whichever one of these you want. Um, And we I actually bring the whole stack and just let you. Yeah, you can take whatever. If, if I can remember. Good so, luck with that. So those that have come back and watch is, he said Galaxy. Uh, probably Galaxy. Galaxy. Uh, yeah, that's the Galaxy one. So yep. those that are watching, cool. For the next show to give away, Did I'll, I'll, pick one? yes, yeah, he wants the. Galaxy. I'll give you a breakdown one. pair of hoodie. He's putting it in my book bag. Or a breakdown pair, remember. or a breakdown pair T-shirt. But I want to do a trivia question. So stay tuned to our Facebook page. I am going to try and post something. Luke and I will kind of get together and I'll post something on there. Just kind of come up with a good, good uh, trivia question. Mm -hmm. First one correct will be a winner. I'm going to. Uh, I'm also going to do something. I had a. I had an idea because we need to give away some cool wig jerseys too. I need you to give some stuff away. Yes. Um, I'm going to post my uh, senior picture on Facebook and do a roast me. Oh God, yes. <laughs> the best one. The best one. I might even give away a couple jerseys. For those that don't know, if yeah. they don't watch the show at the beginning. The senior picture is on our intro. So. Bad luck, Brian. Senior pictures on the intro, but yes, stay tuned for the the trivia question. It is going to be a throwback to the rising grinds. So if you don't watch those and didn't watch those, it's a, our, our grassroots, our roots before we started this. Mm -hmm. So watch those; you'd never know what might mm -hmm. come up. Yeah. All right. Yep. I think we're uh, we're done with the show. It's time to time to eat. We're um, dry here, so it could even be the first week we start drinking beer and then coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what episode? Yeah. All right. Thanks everybody for hanging out. We we will be back in two weeks. Yep. Um, so I will have. I got my new Nexus bag, so we'll be. Uh, I'll have some kind of review for that, 
have some other videos coming up. I did get a hyper venom. So that review will be coming soon. Uh, pink snack ball. So same thanks. place, same time. Yeah. Two weeks.